the 40th anniversary of the Chevron Houston Marathon. And what a year. 28,000 runners taking to the streets for one of Houston's biggest traditions. We are celebrating the past and present of this historic day. Our mile by mile live coverage begins right now. And good morning, everyone, from beautiful downtown Houston, Texas. Welcome to the 40th running of the Chevron Houston Marathon, and what a race we have for you today. I'm Tom Cook, along with our meteorologist and my co-host, Casey Curry, this morning, and the man who all, knows all things running, John Warren, Rice University track coach this morning. We'll talk about possible records in a second. First, to the forecast, we have an almost ideal day for a marathon. It's true. Runners will love this today. We're starting off in the 30s, upper 30s, which is perfect. So by the time the elites are done, we'll still be in the 40s. Some of the folks who maybe not so elite runners will be a little warm by the time they finish up today. So we like to say perfect for runners, not so perfect for those of us sitting here spectating and right. commenting. You are looking at the finish line right there, but let's take a look at the full marathon course this morning. We begin here in downtown Houston, and of course we end just outside the George R. Brown Convention Center. We go through the Heights, through Montrose, over to Chimney Rock, then into Memorial Park and back downtown. And of course there is also the big half marathon here, the Aramco Half Marathon, and the route looks like this in the half marathon, starting again downtown Houston and ending just on the other side of the George R. Brown Convention Center. So John Warren, can we expect with this kind of weather any records to be broken? We had a course record last year at 207 with an Ethiopian. What about this year? They're attempting to set course records I think in three of the races, both half marathons and the men's marathon. The men's marathon is the most interesting because none of the guys that are entered have actually run anywhere close to what they're trying to run today, but they're very, very young and they're going to have rabbits take them out at 206 you know, a minute faster than the course record is now. Alright, well let's see what we have at the starting line, we have Ted Oberg. Good morning to you, Ted. Tom, the sun's starting to come up over Minute Maid. The fans are here. They're excited. 13,000 runners in the marathon corral. These are the elite runners behind them. Uh, everyone else who has come to Houston from across the country and across the world. Just one minute yet to go. It's amazing. Feels a little chilly for all of us, but behind here, there's people near naked and then full wrapped in plastic bags and sweatsuits, some in pajamas. A lot of people in Texans gear this morning hoping to get off this course well before pregame starts so they can get home. Actually, in our pre race prayer. They included a prayer not only for all these runners, but for the Texans in Baltimore, too. That's clearly on a lot of people's minds. There's two big athletic events in Houston today. We're probably 30 seconds away from the start of this race. This group is going to take off, head down 26 miles through the city, uh, and then behind them, an interesting idea this year, the start line is a little bit narrower, trying to avoid some congestion on the Elysian Viaduct, something that Bob Slovak will talk about just a mile down the road. They're trying to make it a little bit more comfortable for what people have called the best run marathon across the country. The people from 12 until over 80. Here we go for the start of the 40th annual Houston Marathon. And I'm John and Casey, as you guys know, but some of our viewers may not, we're all organized by time here. The first group of runners should be some of the fastest on the course, and behind them is the second wave. This right here, some pace runners just came by, this is about a three-hour marathon right here. There's some pretty serious recreational runners. And then behind them, more and more people uh, will come with slightly slower times, getting back all the way to the back of the run at the six-hour mark. And Ted, we've talked many years about how this is a limited field. You have to get into the lottery. We've got 13,000 in the marathon this year, 11,000 and a half marathon. And for those people at the back of the pack, they don't have to worry about getting up to the starting line late. It's all run by chips in the shoes, Casey, and your timing doesn't start until you get past that strip. Well, and they've got everybody staggered, too. So what we're seeing here are the fastest runners, the best runners, and then the next waves will come of folks who aren't so fast. Yeah, the nice part is watching this on TV. They're, they're flowing through really well. 
a lot of marathons at this point, you're walking through the, the starting area. They've done a great job with the, these corrals today. Well, they've narrowed it down this year, right, John? In, in other words, made the starting gates a little bit narrower because they get up to the Elysian Viaduct a mile into the race and they get such huge crowds because everybody's so stacked yeah, up. Yeah, bottlenecks and they have, people have to come to a stop and really spruce things up. So they want to get the bottleneck done early and, when, and they do that before the start line. So when they actually get to the start line, they're running close to their pace and it looks like everyone is flowing very, very well. And there's really no disadvantage, like we were just talking about, to starting further back in the line there because your time does not start until your chip on your shoe actually crosses that first starting line. Exactly. Right? exactly. Your time is from when you hit the starting line to when you hit the finish line. And the actual time that the elites are running is different from what you're running as, an, as a non-elite. And we are looking at the lead elites right here, John. I'm not sure if you recognize any of the runners. We do have a couple of Ethiopians who are going out fast. we are going to have the rabbits leading as well. we got four pace camps today, one for the men's marathon, the women's marathon and then both halves. Who are we looking at here? I, I'm not sure completely, but I would guess this is the half marathon uh, elites and the rabbits. The rabbits, by the way, are phenomenal athletes. And in fact, one of the rabbits, uh, Philemon Lebo, actually beat the two guys that are the yes, main Andrea. competitors today. So it, it's going to be interesting to see if he even just wants to continue and keep going. And tell us about how they go about getting the rabbits. They actually hire them for the race, right? In fact, some runners hire their own rabbits. Right. Like, there's actually a couple rabbits here for uh, a man, there's a runner named Simon Byru that's trying to make the Canadian Olympic team, and he brought his own two rabbits down that were just, one's made the U.S. team for the uh, 10K for the World Champs in 09, and the other one's a 358 miler. But he brought his own rabbits down with him to try to hit the, his, hit the mark he's shooting for. You know, we, I was just going to say, we had our Olympic trials for the marathon yesterday on the same, kind of on the same course, uh, and so we won't see a lot of our top Americans running today, but are there other people who are trying to cover, qualify for their own Olympic teams in other countries? There are. Can There's they do a, that today? Sean Forrest is trying to make the Australian Olympic team. He has to run under 212. Simon Byru from Canada has to run under 211.29. Uh, Holly Rush is trying to run a two, under 231 to make the Great Britain Olympic team. Wow. Well, we've got Bob Slovak, Elisa Rivas, and you've heard Ted Oberg. He's on the course as well. And our reporter, Samika Knight, will go to all of them coming up live with more coverage of the 40th running of the Chevron Houston Marathon right after this. Everybody to ABC 13's live coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon. We've got the Aramco Half Marathon, the EP 5K as well. And you are looking at the lead runners this morning. You're looking at a live view from Sky Eye HD. We also have four pace cams to give you live coverage from the ground this morning, both covering the men's and women's marathon and the men's and women's half marathon as well. Welcome back, everybody, here with Tom Cook, John Warren. And we want to remind you that if you've got questions for us, this morning. We are all about social media. So Facebook, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter. I've got my iPad here, both iPhones. And so we want to hear your questions for John. Maybe you've got some running questions on how to get started. And of course, we've got Mayor Parker with us this morning. Mayor Anise Parker, huge weekend in Houston. We were just talking about how exciting it's been. It's a great sports weekend for the city of Houston. The Olympic time trials yesterday were uh, spectacular. It uh, was, was perfect. The city was beautifully showcased. But the best thing about this weekend is that we've done this for 40 years. This is a running town. People will be out along the, the, the route cheering on the runners. It's going to be great for them, but it's also great for the city of Houston. It really is. And talk about kind of the after effect here, because there's so many charities that benefit, plus huge economic benefit as well. Well, they talk about run for a reason. They're not just here to race. They're also here to give back. And uh, that they, the, the Houston Marathon over the years has developed a uh, support base that supports them and they want to make sure they support uh, worthy charities in the city. Mayor, today the big Texans game coming up. We have encouraged everyone to wear the Texans colors and get out along the route. Um, I don't think there could really be, we say this is the biggest single, biggest single sporting event in the city of Houston, this marathon, but there couldn't really be a bigger sporting day for the city, could there? Absolutely not. The fact that the Houston Marathon is the single biggest sporting event and then to have the Olympic trials yesterday and the Texans today, this weekend uh, it's gonna be hard to beat yeah it's just a beautiful day out here too in downtown Houston now 
in your past, you said you've had some family members that were regular runners, but you were never just get out there and jog yourself, kind of. I was on my high school track team. Oh, you were? Oh, oh. absolutely. Oh, okay. My dad was a marathoner. Your dad was a marathoner. My dad was a marathoner. I, I, I never attempted the long distances, but uh, I was on my high school track team. Sprints? Hurdles? Uh, believe it or not, as short as I am, I was a high jumper. Oh, you were? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, it. I was. Uh, yeah, my, my top finish was third in a in a track meet, uh, but then uh, all of the other girls just kept getting taller and taller, and I stopped. <laughs> I know the feeling, <laughs> but I, you feeling, know, but I have we? the pictures of me in my track uniform back then. Oh, I love it! I love it. So this has got to be special for you because it really you've got a history in your family of, yeah. of long distance running, it's, and it's a special thing. This is not like just running around the block. It's not, but I had a history in my family of sports, and that's what. It's not just the people who are out competing today, not really competing, competing against themselves. It's about the fact that so many Houstonians will be lining the course and cheering them on. Yeah. That we understand what they're going through. We understand what it took them to get there. Look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? And so many people, like you said, out there holding up signs for people they don't even know. They just make this part of their family tradition. They bring the kids and the dogs out, make signs, bring the hot cocoa, and just make a day of it. And look at yesterday, all the people that lined this right. route for the Olympic trials. I think some of the elite runners yesterday were stunned by the size of the crowds. The, uh, the, I loved it when the third place finisher was, was coming around and, and uh, uh, yeah. Exhorting the crowd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Cheer very for me. exciting. Yeah. And it's got to yeah. bode well nationally because, let's face it, everybody's watching this uh, national coverage yesterday of the trials on national TV. Uh, this has just got to be very nice for the city of Houston. Now, of course, if you watch this route, you're going to see a lot of the city of Houston. It's going to look very different from yesterday, which was a closed loop. This, it really, uh, we're going through poorer neighborhoods of town. We're going to go through nicer neighborhoods of town. You're going to get a tour of Houston. Yeah, it's great. With yeah. this with this marathon and I I have to salute the the sponsors. Chevron for the marathon, Aramco for the half marathon, and El Paso for the 5K. We couldn't do it without corporate sponsors and thousands and thousands of volunteers. All right, Mary, quickly, which is easier, running uh, politically or back there in the track team in high school? Oh, track. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought no, you not, said. Definitely not politics. <laughs> right. well, nice. congr congratulations on another great event, Thank Mary Nice Parker. Wonderful. Thank you very much. When uh, Mayor Parker sat down, she immediately talked about the weather yeah. and how Beautiful. perfect it was yesterday, probably today, just a tad bit warm. We're going to go back to the ABC. 13 studios and talk to uh, meteorologist David Tillman. He's going to give us an update on the current weather conditions. Good morning, David. Good morning, Casey. We can see what the sky is doing behind you there. We're seeing uh, a few clouds begin to move in, but still a, a nice morning out there clouds wise, even though I do expect the clouds to increase as we go through the morning hours. Uh, the big thing is temperature and humidity. Humidity levels are low this morning. Temperatures near and outside of the belt are in the 30s right now, but of course the marathon is being run inside the belt. It's a matter of fact around the loop and inside the loop and in those areas we're seeing temperatures at 42 degrees of Memorial Park 44 downtown so on the track temperatures are actually in the 40s right now by 9 a.m. 50 degrees and by 11 a.m. 57 degrees so temperatures are going to be warming quickly Casey back to you Thanks so much, David. So really, this is great weather uh, for uh, running, whether you're an elite runner or spectating. Right, spectating. This is really isn't too bad. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's not super, super cold, but not super warm yeah. either. We're about 12 minutes into this race. We have the elite runners out at about the three mile mark or so, but we do have a lot of people still crossing the starting line where Ted Oberg is. Ted, good morning once again. Hey, good morning, Tom. You know, they're runners as far as I can see. And yeah, you're right. We're 12 minutes into this race. But look, for all of these people, you were talking about it with Casey. Times don't start ticking until they cross that red stripe. And then they're off on the race to beat their own record uh, or just to, to get their times as they go across the 26 miles. But gosh, I'm a tall guy, and I can't see the end of this pack. 13,000 runners, uh, they're all sort of shedding their gloves, shedding their jackets as they cross this line. They've been in this corral for quite some time this morning, uh, but they're warming up as they get across, starting to run, and sort of doing this delicate balance as they run, Tom and Casey, clicking their own watch as they cross the start line, uh, and maybe throwing a glove at George, our photographer, here this morning. Uh, so we're dodging all of that. But really a great-looking bunch of, gr uh, of runners. Uh, and awfully happy here as they get set. But we all know the first mile is the easiest. We'll see them uh, in about 20 miles uh, in a couple hours, see how they look then. 
Uh, let's hope they're still cheering at mile 20. That exactly. may not be the case. You know, there's there's a wall just before, just after that, as we That's talk right. about. That's right, exactly. Then it becomes that 6.2 yeah. mile race from that point on. Let's go out to Bob Slovak. He is at the uh, Elysian Viaduct, mile two. Let's see what Bob's got going on. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, a beautiful uh, morning out here for a run. And as you can see, the uh, runners coming by here, you know, Ted had talked about them staggering the start to uh, alleviate some of the congestion here on the Elysian Viaduct. And it's actually working. Now, we've been I've been out here a number of years when the runners are coming by and they can barely move coming over the over the viaduct here. But it's a nice pace. And as you can see, the runners are actually spread out pretty good as they they kind of try to pick up their pace and find their pace for the morning. And as you can see, everybody's happy right now because this is a two mile marker. Uh, Back in 1972, back in 1972, 113 runners ran in the Houston Marathon. I've had 113 pass me in the last 10 seconds. It has grown incredibly. Uh, 28,000 runners out here. And this is one of the great shots right here as it comes over the Elysian Viaduct. You can see the, the beautiful sunrise here. And then you can see the thousands of runners coming over the viaduct here at the two mile marker and getting ready for a, a fantastic morning of running. That's what we can call it here, is the weather is beautiful and the runners are, are ready to go. Just take a look at it. Good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> we see the As you can see, everybody's, everybody, Tom, everybody's in great spirits over here as usual at the two mile marker. They really are. And I see the clothes flying through the air, Bob, as people get to the two mile mark and go, well, one layer gone. That's right. You know, that race back in 1972, as Bob said, 113 runners. It was a it was a double loop race and they had the turnaround point, an old Chevy station wagon That's park right. there. Danny Green won it in 1972, two hours, 32, wow. 33 minutes. So times have changed. My favorite part of that story is what they got at the end, which was an igloo cooler. Oh, that yes. was their prize. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Today, $35,000 exactly. for first place, 17 for the second. All right, we're going to come back and talk more to John Warren, the Rice University track coach, about what the we can expect from the elite athletes and others today when the 40th running of the marathon continues right after this. everybody to ABC 13's live coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon, the Aramco Half Marathon, and the El Paso 5K. Uh, I'm here. I'm Casey Curry. I forgot to tell you who I was. I'm Tom here Cook. to talk to everybody else. John Warren. <laughs> We're all here this morning to give you the very latest on what's happening with this very exciting, largest single sporting event here in Houston. And we've been asking you this morning on Facebook and Twitter to get on social media. Ask us what questions you have. We would love to see pictures of your loved ones who are running this morning. Maybe you took a picture before they headed out. Uh, tweet it to us. Facebook it to us. We are checking all things social media this morning. By the way, if you're on Twitter, the hashtag, the official one, is uh, pound H-O-U marathon. So shortened up. Instead of Houston Marathon, it's H-O-U marathon. I've got a question. Something on... we've talked about, but we probably didn't answer specifically. Well, and that's the beauty of this interactiveness. If we say something and you're like, what the heck are y'all talking about? Tweet it to us. We'll ask John Warren. Uh, at Mario Lunar asked us, what is a rabbit? We talked about a rabbit at the beginning of this. John or, Warren. Or they're uh, also known as pacers. They're people that are designed they're paid to run, make sure the race goes out at a particular pace to get a fast time. The, uh, you'll see the difference between today and yesterday is that there were no pacers in that championship in the trials yesterday. So like the women's race went out at 6.11. They ended up averaging about 5.31. But they went out really slow because there's no one to take it. Are they but, not allowed in that kind of race? Uh, no, they're not allowed. You have to, you, they're, they're, they don't set them up. You have to qualify for that race. So if somebody had volunteered or they'd organized it in some way where one team paid someone, they could. Because they're not against the rules by any means. But, the, but that race is not one where the trials, Olympics, world championships, they don't bring pacers in for those. It's just a straight head-to-head -head deal. And explain how it works because the pacers don't necessarily go the entire length of the race. Right. The, like in the half marathon today where they came through 14 flat through 5K, that's their goal. They're trying to run 430 pace the entire way wow. to run 59 flat. And they're right on. There's two pacers pacers trying to run that pace. They're expecting them to go about nine miles. Okay. So that U-turn is where they'll probably stop. They're going to go between nine miles and 15K, which is 9.3 miles. Do you ever have a pacer that goes out and wins the race? It has happened. They're, the most famous one is uh, Paul Pilkington back in, he won Los Angeles Marathon years ago. He was supposed to pace it through 30K, which is 18.6 miles. And he ran the exact pace he was supposed to. He got to 30K, looked around, nobody was in sight, and just went ahead and won it. <laughs> well, why not? Yeah. If you can do it, 
Take advantage of it. Right, and the Pacers today are supposed to set f fabulously fast paces. Uh, they're, the marathon field, which we're looking at right, right. now, they're trying to go 206. They came through the three miles. The last split I got was, was 1423. So they're, they're, they're pretty close to being on pace to run a very, very fast time. Last year we had a new course record, of course, set by the Ethiopian. That was 207.04. And is there a good chance with this weather today that we might see a couple of people beat that? or just They're trying. You've got two athletes out there, um, uh, Demisa Senga and uh, Tiraku Jafar, and also Dabibi Tolosa. So three uh, uh, Ethiopians are giving it a shot. And what's funny is that the, the same coach that brought the athletes that have set the record the last three years, three different athletes all run 207, um, he... It, he is claiming they can run 205 or 204. They're trying to run a 206 pace. They've done nothing at all to indicate they can run these times in their past. But they're very, very young. I mean, Sega is, uh, is only 23, and uh, Tolosa, well, Tolosa is a little, he's 32. But they think they can really run a, a stupendously fast pace today, something they've never indicated they can do. So it's going to be interesting. 209s and 208s are their PRs. Well, that would be fantastic if we get a new Houston Marathon record today. I just love seeing him run through the neighborhoods, Casey. Well, you can see all facets of Houston. And it's great. This year, we have better coverage for you than ever. We've always, always had Sky Eye and at least one pace camera. But this year, we have four pace cameras on the ground that will follow the leaders of the men's marathon, the women's marathon, the men's half, and the women's half. So we're giving you the, the best, plus we're going to get you all the people that you want to see, those people that you know, your neighbors, your friends, your family. You will get an up-close look at the grit and determination on their faces today. And that, the, the women's race is what they just showed a second ago, and uh, uh, Alamud, uh, El, sorry, Alamedu Abera is leading, and you can see she's with the rabbit. He's a, they've, what we've always done here at this marathon, they've always brought in male rabbits the last few years to lead the women, and they've led them all the way into like the last 50 meters. So so, and they've set records. Uh, last year there wasn't a record, but the three years before that there was. All in the, all in the high 220s. All broke the record that Ingrid Christensen had set back in 1984. So we went almost almost 30 years without getting a record, 25 years. Then all of a sudden, bang, 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 it went down. Okay. And last year's winner was 226. As we've said, this is the 40th running of the Houston, Houston Marathon. A big, big weekend for the Houston Marathon Committee. And reporter Adele Uchida caught up to the first man who won that marathon, the first marathon back in 1972 more on the anniversary. Here's Adela. On a cool December day in 1972, Dan Green won the first Houston Marathon. It's amazing, you know, it was, seems like it was just yesterday, 40 years ago. It was Green's first marathon ever, and he ran it in two hours, 32 minutes, and 33 seconds. I'm really blessed to have, to have been able to do that. But it wasn't his last. I finished 13 of them. I've run in, in quite a few more I didn't finish because it was never my design to um, train for the marathon. In the 40 years since the first Houston Marathon, a lot of things have changed about the race from how many people are running it to who is running it to how it's run. With the light rail, we were forced off of Main Street. The Marathon's race director has overseen a lot of course changes in his 10 years with the race, but back in 1972, the 116 runners saw a lot of the same scenery. It's a five mile loop contained within Memorial, completely within Memorial Park where we stand. The field too has changed. It really was a guys club and probably of that hundred, maybe five were women. In 1972, just one woman finished. It took her more than five hours. In the last Houston Marathon, more than 2,500 women finished, and the winning woman crossed at 2 hours, 26 minutes, 33 seconds, faster than Green's winning time that first marathon. And as the marathon reaches a milestone anniversary, the field is bigger than ever. Male or female, I think it's awesome that everyone is out running. Everyone, including American Olympic marathon hopefuls. People are saying, you know, what are you doing for your 40th anniversary? I'm saying, well, we're bringing the men and the women to Houston for the Olympic Trials Marathon. Green won't be running the 40th Houston Marathon. Injuries are keeping him on the sidelines. So now I haven't run in a while because of my foot. Uh, otherwise, I'd, I'd give it a shot. But he will be there cheering. Wow, 40 and years ago. Amazing. Yeah. 
And Adela Uchida, she must have gotten a special kick out of that. Because she's not just a regular reporter. She's a marathon runner. She's, she's running, running today. today, trying to qualify for Boston this Dan year. Danny Green's actually known by most people as Coach Green. He's Aww. arguably the winningest coach in state history for high school. He's won, I'm guessing now, 12 to 14 state titles in cross country. I was about to say, he better built be a, a track coach of some he sort. Built, <laughs> he built a dynasty uh, up at the Woodlands. He started at Clear Lake, and it was really good. Then he went to McCullough, and it became the Woodlands High School. And his son has since taken over that program. He retired two years ago. Very cool. Hey, we've got reporters uh, all along the route today. We're going to take you down to uh, Bob Slovak. He's at the Elysium Viaduct uh, Mile 2 this morning. Uh, Bob, it looks like you've still got a big crowd behind you. We've got a, a huge crowd behind me, and, and some of you wanted to tell you hello. Just said, hey, tell Casey I said hello, so hello to Casey. Uh, a lot of runners coming by. You mentioned Adela Chia. She just came flying by here. We've got the marathon runners closest to me. On the other side of the uh, median there is the half marathon runners. As you can see, thousands of runners still coming across here at the Elysian Viaduct. And about 20 to 25 Go Texan cheers being thrown out as they come by so far. I love it. There you go. Go Texans. A lot of these runners trying to keep their pace up so they'll be, they'll be able to get home in time for kickoff at noon. And I love to see the smiles and the happy faces here. Uh, and, and we'll see them again at the finish line, but maybe not as wide. But they are in a great mood down here. The beautiful weather as we get going. And as you can see, thousands of runners still coming over the viaduct. We mentioned the staggered start, and it is work. It is working to per perfection. Not as congested as they come over. Enough room for the runners to find their pace and to really get going on here on what's going to be a, a fabulous morning. <laughs> that pretty much sums it up right there. Back to you guys. That does sum it up because after they run this, we got to have a big run into the playoffs for the Houston Texans. So we are about all things Texans today, and you see all those people wearing the Texans colors. It's true. We've asked everybody to go on to Facebook and Twitter, ask us your questions, give us your comments about the marathon. I did get a funny one from Shannon. She said the marathon is so much more exciting than football. <gasps> I don't know, Shannon. I don't know, Shannon. It's a blast for me this morning. <laughs> we'll see it noon today. <laughs> we can have both. That's right. A world exists for both. All right, we'll talk more about the 40th running of the marathon and the half marathon right after this. Don't go away. Why has this particular marathon become so popular, so big? They even have a lottery to get into things, he says. What makes it that way? Well, it's Houston. It's a great city. It's a great course. It, well, I think it's the biggest marathon in the South, and the timing is very good for people living in Houston and not having a train through the summer. Honestly, I think um, social media, like Facebook, that's how I started running with MySpace. I saw friends sign up. So it's like, it's, you know, you inspire other people to get out and it's just you know i think that's why it blew up the last couple of years because when i first signed up i signed up in december and it was still open and now it's like it sells out in two hours hello my name is john olson i'm abb's senior vice president for north america ABB is proud to be the title sponsor of the Team Challenge. Now in its fourth year, the ABB Team Challenge allows today's runners to represent their company, charity, running club, and other organization in a friendly and fun competition. ABB is home to over 600 employees in the Houston area. We value the opportunity to support the communities where we live. Marathon Weekend is one of Houston's great civic events and helps raise awareness and funds for local charities. This is truly one of the city's most anticipated annual events. ABB is not only a sponsor, but we also participate. We have 40 employees in participating in one of today's races. I run because it energizes me. I run to honor my daughter. We run for charity. We run to stay fit. I run to relax. We run to challenge ourselves. We like to run. And I run to stay fit and to set a good example for other ABB employees. From all of ABB's companies, including Ventex and Bellbor, we wish good luck to all of today's runners. We are Houston! 
You know, for the most part, running is an individual sport, but we do have the team challenges here today, and we also have the other challenges of raising money for charities, just raising awareness of various diseases, uh, all kinds of reasons I people are running today. I love Run for a Reason. I mean, last year, the record $2 million they raised yeah. for all of those charities, and, and it's just how wonderful. I mean, you're running for yourself right. and your own health. But to also be supporting something that you believe in is really cool. Yeah, we, you can hey, sign up for 57 charities. Run for super. Super. Whichever one you want. Exactly. Whatever you want. We're looking at live here uh, from our Sky Eye HD camera. And we've been asking you folks to go on social media, Twitter and Facebook. Give us your questions, your comments. Uh, we have a really very cool comment online on Facebook from Adam. He says he's watching it online because we're streaming it live at abc13.com this morning. He's a Canadian who's oh. living in France, but he's watching Simon Baru taking a shot at trying to qualify for the Canadian Olympic team. John, you just talked about him. Right, he's got and, and Canada has a tougher standard than the Olympic standard. The Olympic standard is uh, the A standards, they call it, which you have to run if you want to take more than one person is 215. Wow. Canada set a standard of 211.29. They don't, it's like there's some countries have an attitude that if you can't get in there and be in the top 10 or whatever, they don't, they don't want, want to take you. Wow. Whereas the U.S. will bring the biggest team it possibly can. Of course. In fact, yesterday we had 22 guys and 21 women run the A standard in that race, which is just completely unheard of. They may not have set a, a marathon record on the men's side, but they did in the women's, but it's by far the best marathon trials we've ever had. And so the Canadians, unlike us, don't have just a marathon trials. They can take a time from right. the recognized very, very marathon? Few, very few. In fact, I don't think any other country in the world runs a trial. Oh to pick their marathoners. Most don't run trials for the tracks. They don't have the amount of depth that we do. Okay. The U.S. will always bring the largest team to the Olympics. We'll put as many people in as many events as we possibly can. And uh, But si Simon Byron's background is great. He ran for the University of Wisconsin. He's a two-time uh, Division One cross-country champion. And he, this is a big step for him. He's he's um, uh, not run that well this year. He's only run a 64-minute, 65-minute uh, half marathon. So for him to have to run it under 211, he's got to have stepped it up quite a bit. We're looking at two of the pace camps here and you tell me which one we're looking at John is this the half marathon on the right uh, no no they're both These the marathons both the right marathons. now okay that is the women's on the right and the men's on the left oh that's the, her yeah. rabbit and the, oh yes uh, right. I see that's yeah. right it would be a rabbit up and, front and they're so all alone right first. now they're um, uh, that's a bear out there up front and um, they just came through mile five at 523 pace for 2719 that's pretty that's pretty smoking for the women the really really fast folks right now are the half they're right on pace to go 59 flat they came through the 10k in 2802 that's a great 10k that is, I mean, we're talking about Olympic A standard. They'll take 24 guys the Olympics roughly, in, and they have to run like 27:47. And this They're, is the half marathon pace cam right here. Right. No, this is the. This is the. The. Oh, which one is this? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. It's difficult. We do have four of the pace camps, and uh, as we get uh, a better look from Sky, you can easily tell which pack we're in. But right here at the pace camps, I would assume that's the. I, I'm thinking this is the, the uh, yeah, this the is the women's hat? half marathon. Okay, you uh, Sean, have some guys Sean, out front. Oh, well, Sean, okay. Sean's got a haircut. That's Sean Wade. Sean Wade's a 45-year-old runner from Houston that's setting the oh, pace. Yeah. His goal in life today is to lead them all the way to the finish line. They're supposed to be going 69 flat pace. I haven't got any feedback from, from what paces they're hitting, but they'll be right on pace. In fact, this is a field where they're, they've set it almost the opposite of the men. There's 69 flat as their goal, but they've got people that run 67 to 68. So they so, can run better even than what their goal is. Right. Most likely, he won't beat them in the end. They'll stay with him to about nine miles, and, and they could pass him coming in. All right. Here's a men's half marathon pace cam, and we've got somebody who's out there all by themselves. Uh, if, he, if he's broken from the rabbits, that'll be absolutely outstanding. That's uh, it's just got a simple number up front. So it's probably I'm going to make a guess that that's either I'm going to make a guess right now. I should know the answer. That's going to that's a. a uh, Faisa Lalisa. He was third in the world championships in the marathon. He has the the, um, the honor of being the youngest person in history to break 206 in the marathon. He didn't do that at the world champs. He ran 210 at the world champs. But the uh, he he's, can easily run 59 mid. He, but he's on pace to possibly go under 59. That would be fantastic. That would be a new course record here. And, and it will. I would be surprised if it's not the best or second best time in the world this year. Well, let's go to the turnaround point, which is about the 8 to 9 mile mark. Our uh, reporter, Lee Elisa Rivas is there live with the crowds on that corner. And good morning to you, Elisa. Do we have Elisa Rivas? I know sure she is. Spot. Hello, yes, we're here at the turnaround point. This is the spot just before nine miles where the half marathon heads. We are 
at Montrose and Richmond. So the half marathon will head back toward Allen Parkway. The marathoners will keep going. The half marathon has been hugely popular in recent years with 11,000 runners compared to 13,000 that they're able to take in the marathon. So thousands of participants. And right now, just in the last half hour, we are seeing more people come up along the sides because they know the runners are headed this way. But as of right now, we had the wheelchair, the wheelchair race come through. We have not seen yet any of the elite runners come through, but we are standing by and we'll bring you pictures as they approach minutes, the nine minutes. mile marker. Back to you. All right, when we will come back to you as we get some of those elite half marathoners making that uh, straightaway in just a second. Well, and we are continue with us. Please stay with us as we head to break for more live coverage of the 40th anniversary of the Chevron Houston Marathon. Welcome back, everyone, to the 40th running the Chevron Houston Marathon. There's the finish line in downtown Houston. The Aramco Half Marathon and the El Paso 5K run are also underway. 38, almost 39 minutes into the running of this marathon, and we got the runners just at about the nine-mile mark. That's the elite. That's right, and it's really, what a perfect day. Temperatures are now in the 40s. I just heard from meteorologist David Tillman back at the ABC 13 studios. 44 degrees at Memorial Park. That's not bad. Uh, I think the Oh, this is awesome right now. Might like it a little colder, but it's perfect for everybody else. Yeah, I think for most elites it would, but not... The um, the story of the Ethiopians, especially, they like it a touch warmer. Touch warmer. They like a little warmer than most people do for some reason. I know that's stereotyping. That's not fair. But the idea is like if they could have it in the 40s, 40s or 50s versus 30s and 40s, Got right? It. But the, there's no wind. No. There's no humidity. No. So and and for them, the sun's not going to beat down on them, especially in that half marathon. Oh, you're right. Because I mean, sunrise at 7:18 this morning. They're going to finish up very quickly. Right. I mean, half uh, marathon. They're done in what an hour. Uh, the, hopefully under 59 minutes today. Yeah. He is absolutely flying right now. He came through eight miles at 36.02, exactly on 59-minute pace. Amazing. It, it, is, it is incredible how fast they're moving right be now. Great to set another record here. Of course, they crossed the starting line some 39 minutes ago. Ted Oberg was there to watch him go by, and he joins us from the starting line. I hope everybody's gone from there now, Ted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Tom. Well, here's one, one last runner making uh, her start on the 5K, which is about to wrap up. But I wanted to show you here what the starting line of a marathon looks like like once all the runners have disappeared. Now keep in mind, runners get down here probably a little more than an hour before the start, some probably more than that, uh, and they're all bundled up. It was cold this morning, 40 or a little bit below, so there's all sorts of fleeces that they shed. Uh, I don't even know, drop cloth or something. There's hand warmers through here, uh, thermoses. Uh, here's a nice vibe bring that back for you. I don't know if you're a fan of Stanford. Uh, some runners tape, all this stuff. Uh, incidentally, it's all getting bagged up by some uh, some a group from Waste Management, and all this stuff is going to get donated to the homeless. It's just one piece of the charity puzzle of the Houston Marathon. Uh, and take a look at here. We have some of the uh, thousands of volunteers that make this thing uh, happen every year. Uh, and earlier this week, we caught up with a man uh, who makes not only volunteering but running a big part of his life. Well, Ted, thank you very much. We'll get you that report in just a couple of seconds. Ted? <laughs> Ted's confused. We have confusion out there. It, it happens. We've got lots of wonderful stories to tell you throughout this yeah, race. That's just one of many. And, of course, uh, throughout today, we're not only going to talk about some of the uh, really historic Things. We, we told you about one of the, the guys from the original race, but we've also got all of the folks who are out here running for a reason. Uh, more than 50 charities that people are raising money for out here racing. Uh, all kinds of wonderful stories. I even did a, a story about some of the special needs folks here in Houston who packed all of the bags that the runners get to take, and they take such pride uh, in doing that. So, so many wonderful stories today. Two stories really stuck out in my mind this week. One is a woman who works for Vincent and Elkins Law Firm, and she, Kim Budzik, is running what essentially is two marathons. She starts out early in the morning morning before this marathon runs the course and then runs back the right way. In other words, she goes the opposite way, what? ends up at the starting line, and she goes, yeah. Okay, the, why? The 52 miles. <laughs> because she can. Because she can. <laughs> you know. And then the other guy is this Wall Street guy who lives in New <laughs> York, amazing. a young guy, and he's running his 200th marathon today, and he chose to run it here in Houston. He's run 299 marathons. marathons before in 18, or no, 30 countries, including Antarctica. So does the, the woman going backwards and forwards, does she count that as one or two marathons? <laughs> 
guess that would be two. <laughs> you know, I, her husband, I read, wasn't going to uh, run it with her today. That's amazing. You know. yeah, well, he, I think I read he got hurt because he had done a 100-miler oh, a few weeks ago. That hurt him. <laughs> They're just the people wired differently. Some people yes. are tall. Some people are strong. Some people can run forever. Well, there are those ultra-marathoners and then the people that do... Uh, Tell me the term for it, but they do the 50 miles. What's the longest you've ever run? In a training run, I went 30 miles. 30 miles. And uh, but the longest race I've ever done is a marathon. Okay. Wow. The marathon's interesting versus the ultras because the fidibities died at just the wrong spot. Because the uh, um, you know if you run a 20 miler, you can really run hard and recover fairly quickly. And if you run over 30 miles, you can't go that fast. But in this, especially with the elites, the 26 mile, 25 mile range, you can go really, really hard, but it's long enough to do a lot of damage. It can it'll beat you up and keep you incredibly sore. All right. John makes a, a Greek reference here. <laughs> Phidippides, the first runner who's delivering a message, right, to the king of Greece, dies. After he delivers the message. 26 miles, 200 and what, 285 yards. It was really 24 miles. And oh. then, then they changed it in the 1908 Olympics, I think it was in London, where the, they wanted to make it to where it went um, uh, underneath where the queen was sitting. So that's where it became 26 miles, 385 yards. So when they run the course in Greece now, they've got to go down, make a little... U turn like they did in the trials yesterday, a little yeah. weird U turn, and then keep going. Okay. <laughs> See, I sit next to Smarty Pants Tom Cook every day during the week, and I got Smarty Pants over here. John <laughs> he knows Ward it all. I'm he does you. know it all, and he'll tell you all about got it. it. All up there. <laughs> It's true. Hey, really quickly, I want to remind everybody that we do have uh, all of our social media working today. I've got Facebook and Twitter up. If you've got questions for us, and we've got a few that we're going to address to uh, Mr. Warren down there in just a few minutes. Uh, but as we go to break, you're looking at one of our views here from Sky Eye HD. It's a great uh, shot. A beautiful shot. Those are our, our marathoners, right? Elite These are the marathoners. marathoners. Elite marathoners. Yes. These are our, our main guys that we're watching. Is there a rabbit running with that pack? Right. Two, there's two rabbits in this okay. pack right now. And These then are the pace setters, the rabbits. Right. right. And they, last night, last they were on 207 pace. I mean, they're really moving well again. Well, that's not bad. They'd have to beat 207-04 to set a new course record here in the city of Houston. Maybe they will do it. We hope so. And we'll be back with much more of the coverage of the marathon and the half marathon right after this. I'm Arlen Isham. Uh, I'm a 33-year uh, veteran of running the Houston Marathon. I also volunteer as one of 7,500 volunteers for the Houston Marathon. I help run the warehouse, mar marathon warehouse. Today is the biggest day of the year at the warehouse. We're actually shipping out all of the supplies that we need for the marathon, the starting line, the finish line, everything at the expo, the things we need. We have about 12 truckloads of materials going to the warehouse, from the warehouse to Brown today. Besides volunteering for months leading up to race day, today Arlen is running his 34th Houston Marathon. When I ran my first marathon here in Houston in 1979, I hurt so bad that I said I'd never do this again. And then a month later, I ran the Woodlands Marathon, the first Woodlands Marathon. And I just started running. From running the race to running the marathon's warehouse, Arlen gives his fellow volunteers credit for getting the job done. The volunteers is what it's all about. It couldn't happen without them. We have like almost 28,000 people this weekend. You know, these 7,500 volunteers, it couldn't happen. You get a lot of um, benefit back from participating in an event like this. There's a tremendous group of people. We have a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, a lot of stress at times, but it's a, it's a really good thing to give back to the community on this weekend. In our 17 year history, crossed the 13 million point for the Run for a Reason program. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing what the 57 charities are going to do this year in 2012. We hope to raise $30,000 this is our first year. That'll, that actually would pay for three new tandem bikes. This event is really important for us because we rely on public contributions. Um, um, events just such as these are great for us. We've been a part of this for um, seven or eight years now, and every year we raise more and more money. Last year we raised over $40,000 dollars and um, each year we are certainly our goal is to raise more and we're trying to raise more this year. The running community is such a giving community. I mean they're selfless. You get kind hearted people that like to do something that the rest of the population doesn't like to do. I mean it's kind of a no-brainer that people are going to want to sit on their couch and donate money to us to go out and do what we call the hard work I guess. Not only are they running for their own goal but uh, running for a cause any cause they choose to run for it puts so much more meaning in the runners. Um, it just uh, gives you 
the reason why you're running for a reason. You know, the Run for a Reason program, uh, it, it's just uh, it's just a natural fit, and we couldn't be more happy with the direction it's going, and we want it to just continue to grow and, and give back to the local communities, the new charities. It's motivation. I mean, you're running for somebody. You're running for a purpose. You're not running, I mean, of course you're running to, you know, for yourself, for your body, but you're running for something that you're passionate about. We want to help everybody that we can. Well, I think the ultimate goal um, is to continue to provide a program that allows each one of the charities to meet their goals. That we offer the flexibility and the stage or the, uh, the platform for them to achieve their goal. And we hope to set a new fundraising goal this year. They raised over $2 million, yeah. the Run for Reason people, last so cool. year, running for 57 charities. We hope they go over that. $12.4 million in the last 17 years is how much this marathon has so raised. So cool. I just heard from Matthew on Facebook. He said he's sitting at home watching at a nice warm den with two-and-a-half-year-old Sean, who's watching our coverage, to watch his dad, who's running for Texas Children's. How Fantastic. cute is that? And we have the El Paso 5K finishers behind us. You see the finishing line here and the people that are in the 5K coming behind us crossing the finish line here in record times of Love it. oh six seven miles a minute hey john maybe you can answer this melanie on Minutes facebook asks why there's no no 10k we've got the 5k the half and the full marathon but no 10k is there I, a reason for that i, I think the, the first question really be why do we run why is there 5k at all oh okay. you know, so you, you really start with you know most most marathons don't have any other races with them like right. boston and new york do halves but they do it completely other months they don't mix the two together oh, okay. so this is just the way that when when they decide to go from a marathon and add the half marathon they knew they could add another event because everyone's down here they've got the finish on the sure. paper i think why don't we add one more event and really a lot of people can run a 5k right and the idea is with a half and the full of the main events this is one where you're down here anyways why not do it a 10k is a lot tougher than a 5k got it so so it, it opens it up to the entire city if you will and to kids i mean the, and to kids. the 5k yes. you can yes. be seven years old isn't that right the youngest that's you the, can... the youngest age for that is seven and, and you i think i just saw one finish I and mean, they'll get out there and run it and have a good time that's great otherwise they'll end up doing the half marathon and that's not a good idea no. we'll have to check and see. I don't know how old the oldest runner is in the marathon this year. Last year was a 72-year-old woman. We have had someone as old as 84 run the marathon. I'm not sure if they finished it. Um, only 26.7% of the uh, uh, people who uh, run the marathon are first-time marathoners. It's a lottery, of course. 13,000 in the marathon, 11,000 in the half, and now 4,500 or so in the El Paso 5K run. About 27% of them are first-time runners, John, and we talk about this every year because people come down watch the marathon or the half marathon and go, I'm going to do that next year. Is it something you can train for in a year? Uh, dep it depends on your starting point. If you're okay. way overweight, I think that's a, that's a pretty big challenge because uh, what, what often happens is people want to start training for it and they jump in too quickly versus slowly building up the mileage. And the question is, how quickly can you build up the mileage safely? Um, and a lot of that, first first thing you have to do is lose some weight and you kind of balance those two together. Like if you tried to start, go from zero to a 10 mile run, most likely you're going to get hurt right. and you're going to cut your training back. That's the biggest concern is getting hurt. So you've got to build up the mileage to be able to do this event. All right, we have 13 thousand people as we say who start the marathon last year 4300 men finished it and about 2500 women so you're looking at just over half there's a lot of people that do drop out of the race in sure. the half marathon it was a much better rate and 11,000 people started last year 4,000 men and 5,000 5,200 women finished it so about 9,200 out of the total of 11,000 finished the half marathon and just so people at home are watching we've been flipping back and forth between the men's and the women's marathon and even though you see a man running here that this is the leader of the women's marathon that's her pace setter in front she's of her. She's all by herself too. Right, she's been all by herself from the front. She's running like 224 pace. She threw it, her eighth mile was 509, which is just just stunningly fast. I mean this they're they're right by uh, uh, obviously Herman Park and Rice University at that area, but they're put, they're putting in some marks that are our, our record-setting potential mark. Yeah, and we're only about what five six minutes away from the finish of the half marathon, and we don't want to miss that. So let's go to the turnaround point where those uh, half marathoners have already gone past. Elisa Rivas, once again live from there. Good morning to you. Good morning. Here at the turnaround point, we're close to the nine mile marker and we've seen all the elite runners come through for the half and for the full marathon. We're starting to see something that resembles more 
uh, the pack now, a greater volume of runners coming through near the nine mile marker and the turnaround for the half marathon. And something that John Warren mentioned, really, you know, the half marathon has become more popular in recent years. It's obviously a less grueling distance than the half marathon. Some people can't train for a marathon in one year, so they work their way towards it by doing the half marathon. They find it a comfortable distance to go rather than going the whole 26.2 miles where you are hitting that wall at 20 and just dying as you get to the end. As you mentioned, a lot of people do drop out. Fewer people dropping out of the shorter distance race. So a lot of support that we've seen here as we've come through the last half hour. The streets were right at 7 o'clock, almost totally empty, now almost totally full with all of those spectators, the 250,000 spectators that we love to see here at the Houston Chevron Marathon, the Aramco Half Marathon. I'm going to send it back to you guys. All right, 24,000 this year in the Marathon and the Half. It's a cap that was increased by 2,000 over last year. A lot of people would like to see it turn into a wide open field, but that's very, very difficult to do here because of the narrowness of the streets. Right, and the other thing they do here is they, 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 they got a lot of uh, flack last year for the way they did the lottery. So they made some really smart changes. Yeah. One of the things was if you've run under, uh, I think it was a four hour marathon, you got in. So they, they kind of had, a, it's not like a tremendously hard cutoff, but they put a cutoff to where, yeah. I guess they said if you're a serious marathoner, right. they want to open that door to you and not just open up to anyone who, there's a lot of people signed up for it, get in the lottery and then don't do the training. So they end up not competing. So they know they're going to have a, a no-show factor, but the serious runners, they know they'll get a better, uh, those that have done it before obviously have a better chance of doing it again. And just so people know, when you see us sitting behind us, the, what you're looking behind is the finishers for the 5K. We're still just a few minutes away from the finishers for the half marathon. Yeah, and he'll he'll stand out because he's going to be blown by these people so fast. <laughs> it'll be unbelievable. He's right, Last check I got, he was a little bit off 59 flat. Okay. So he, he's probably going to get the course record. Ryan Hall set that uh, I think in 07. He ran right. 5943, which is 533 pace. That, that's just anything under 60. Go back a second. Anything that's 62 or 63 is ungodly. Yeah. That is just a phenomenally fast pace. Yeah. That, that's stupendous. And it's won money here in the national championships. It'll win money here today. Very so to be 59 minutes is, is unbelievable. Well, so we're talking like this is going to be the number one, two, three, four time in the world this year. At the end of the year, I mean, 2012 is over. It's going to be that that good of a mark. But well, we don't want to miss it. So we're going to take a quick break you because we expect these guys to finish just in a few minutes. So don't go away. You don't want to miss the finish of the men's half marathon. We'll have that for you coming up in right after the break. The Chevron Houston Marathon. Welcome back, everyone, to the 40th running of the Chevron Houston Marathon, the Aramco Half Marathon. I'm Tom Cook, along with my co-host, Casey Curry, and John Warren, the Rice University track coach, our guy who knows things running. And we are here about a minute away now, John, from the finish of the men's half marathon. Will we get close to a record beating 59.43? 59.43 is the record. I think he's going to get that record by quite a bit. They've already got the uh, finish line um, uh, banner, I guess, if you will, he's going to run through up. Up. And it is the pace of show he should be a little bit slower than 59, but not a much. And uh, this should be the, Le Lesa, right? Of Ethiopia. Le Lesa. I mean, he's he's got a pretty good credentials. He's he was not, third in the world championships. Is is that's a pretty impressive thing at the uh, world championships last summer in da Daegu, Korea. And he's run a 205 marathon. That 205 marathon he's run converts to a 59.30. He's coming in now. He can see the finish line. Like I said, he's not going to break 59, but it's definitely going to be a record. And this is a pace that's just, it's just, it's just an unbelievable pace. It's four, he's going to run 431 pace, 432 pace. That's 14 minute 5Ks for, for, for three of them, for four of them in here a row. He, here he it's comes. Just, it's just an unbelievably fast pace. Here Let's he see, comes. He is, he breaks the tape, but unofficially 59-21. That, 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 that is stupendous, the, the, the performance he put out there today. And he's all by himself. I think the next closest runner is a couple hundred yards behind you. Right, and they were not, there's a heck of a good field out there as well. He's beaten the people he's supposed to race today before, but not by much. He, uh, his main competition was supposed to be Tillahoon Regassa, who he beat by nine seconds back in November. But they ran 60-50 and 60-59, I and mean, this is a minute and a half faster than he ran just seven weeks ago. So Fayez Lelesa of Ethiopia unofficially 
uh, the winner of the men's marathon, or the men's half marathon, excuse me. And for that, he'll get $10,000. And for a new course record, a new marathon or half marathon race record, he'll get another $7,500 bonus. Not a bad payday, Casey, at $17,500. Yeah, that definitely, that's not a bad way to go, I would say. <laughs> no, no, and the, and the body, he's going to be excited a bit. He can race again in two or three weeks. That's the amazing part. And yeah. what I also like about this, as you're watching, I thought, you know, if you're watching at home, you're thinking, how's this guy going to get through the, the masses of these people finishing the 5K? But they've separated the elite runners right. from kind of the everyday folks, right? Right. right. There, there's no conflicts at all. Good. <laughs> they, they, they've thought this out. Yesterday was actually more confusing than this. And when they're trying to get the men and women trying to finish together. And they did a great job with that as well. We're going to have uh, Bob Slovak in just a couple of seconds talking to Fayez and Lelesa, the winner of the Ramco Half Marathon. You just touched on it, John, and that's recovery times. Because we talk about these elite runners. First of all, the half marathon, as you said, the recovery time, two to three weeks, and then go for another race? Right. One of the... Uh, uh, general rules is you have to take for every mile you race you take a day recovery and that's a pretty good rule up until the marathon and then as you go faster in the marathon that rule doubles uh, these really 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 good guys the guys that are trying to run 206 today it'll take them anywhere from two to four months to recover before they're back to a hundred percent not that they couldn't go out and run a 215 marathon for them which is great but you know it's not their very best for them to be back at their very best will take a matter of months okay we're looking at the pace cam here too now and this is the women's half marathon, I'm assuming. That's the uh, rabbit who's running out front there. Um, I think, yeah, yes, it's, uh, is it, or maybe that's the women's marathon pace cam. Is no, it, no this, this is the half marathon. This is the half marathon, okay. And the last, the, the splits out there we see now, it's Caroline Kalel should be leading it. I'm not 100% sure of that. And is that, uh, and then right behind her is going to be Balanesh Olajera or Gebra Balanesh. It's hard to tell on, on the screen right now. Yeah, that's Caroline Kalel. We interviewed her on Friday, and she mm -hmm. said she was hoping to run a great race here. Didn't know if she'd be able to uh, set a new PR. That's her PR. There's 108.16, but it looks as though she's coming in very, very close to that, right? Right. She's, she's the Boston Marathon winner from uh, last April, ran 222 up there when they had that, that super tailwind. Yeah. Uh, she beat the girl that was second in the trials yesterday, uh, Davila, by two seconds only. But that's a, that was a, a great performance. That 222 actually converts to, to a 67. But it looks like they've, that's not Sean Wade anymore. This is just somebody else running the race. So they've already left the rabbit. So they're, they're most likely under that 69-minute pace that they're trying to do. Oh, and, that, it is, and that is uh, Oligera. Oh, oh, sorry. Oligera. Olira. Olira, yeah. Olira. Balanesh Olira that's right behind her. And they just went under 45, so they're heading into downtown right now. They, and they, they should be done about 68, 69 minutes. And the interesting thing is the top five women, or those that we think will be the top five women in today's half marathon, are all from Ethiopia. Right. There's a big Ethiopian connection <laughs> it's here. It's really have, amazing. There's, a, there's an agent that deals with many, many of the top people. It started with uh, uh, with Merga back when he went, had got an Olympic uh, bronze medal, got fourth in the Olympics, and then he came here as his next race around 207. And his, his athletes love coming here, and he loves bringing them here because they come here and they do fast. They do great things. And so far, I mean, he's dropping records every year. So when he predicted they could run 206, which, by the way, they're on 206 pace. Great. I mean, they still got a long way to go in the marathon, right. but 206 pace, it's the... He, that could be a three-minute PR for those athletes. Well, that's good money, too. First place, men and women in the marathon, $35,000, and you set a new course record. You get another $10,000 bonus. A forty-five grand payday is a terrific payday for these runners, and, of course, many of them get endorsements, and the, the top, top runners, correct me if I'm wrong, get paid to show up at races. Right, and it carries over. Having a, a Houston victory will give you a big bonus to, to go on. We've had, actually, three runners in the last four years uh, when they won this race the next in the same year, three months later, they've won Boston. Uh, Marigold won it, Dira Tuna on the women's side, and Urqueso on the women's side. They won over and won Boston right away. Is that because of any similarities in the course, or is that just their No, the course their are, peak? are <laughs> completely different, but they, they just have, this has been like the breakout marathon, and then opened the doors to go to things like those. What are the big five marathons in the mm -hmm. world? They've actually worked together and do a, a, the, the, big, the biggest money paid. Everybody's secondary to Berlin, um, Boston, New York, Chicago, and London. Now, Caroline Killell uh, was originally listed as from Kenya. I see on your screen, is it... Uh, Netherlands. The Netherlands. I, I think... I think the, that's where she's living. Living there, training. perhaps, training. But I think originally, and, and the course sheet today said she was from Ethiopia. She's actually from Kenya. I interviewed her, as I said, on Friday. And then uh, Bayanesh Olira is also from Ethiopia, along with the next four top runners. So right. we do have a field from Africa here today. Of course, the Africans have 
always proved to be incredible runners on the long distance scene. They're, they're a little ridiculous. These in the, uh, on the men's side, for example, um, uh, there's been there have been five people in history that have ever run a 203 marathon, or four are currently Kenyans that are running right now, and two will not go to the Olympics because they're going to get they're already guaranteed right? a spot to the to an athlete that's won the last two world championships. So they're going to leave two 203 marathoners at home going into the Olympics this year. So they're, they're, the person that was second at the World Champs last year is not even in the conversation to go to the Olympics. <laughs> and we've always had a great field of Kenyans here at the, at the race as well. David Chariot, who was a Masters champ last year, isn't even in the race this right, year. He's won it three times. Stephen and, and, and Doogie has won it three yeah. times. We have multiple winners and very, very fast times. But uh -huh. the Ethiopians have been one who dominated recently. Yeah. Well, and if people are watching at home, I've, I've seen a lot of comments on Facebook that this is the first marathon people are watching. I don't know where they've been throughout all our coverage, but people are tuning in this morning to watch. And if you're watching a marathon for the first time, and you're seeing all the different bib colors. That really helps everybody identify who's with what. I know it seems sort of basic, but you've got your 5K runners on the right, and their yellow bibs. Half marathoners with the green, is right. that right? And the elites are in the black. And the elites are in the black. And then for the marathon itself... They're red. They're red. Right. Got it. Is there a different mindset at this uh, point in the game for the half marathoners. I mean, what's going through her mind as she comes down, just trying to stay focused? Uh, your, your body's not as beaten down as, say, you would be after running exactly. 26, 26 miles. They're, they're thinking about racing. The, whereas in the marathon, they're, they're, you're juggling two things. Yes, I want to race you, but also I don't want my leg to blow out. I don't want a hamstring to cramp. I don't okay. want to, so, so you're kind of juggling. It's sort of like trying to finish. The, it's like what it is in the marathon is like at the end of a NASCAR race when you haven't got enough fuel and you're trying to beat everybody but not blow all your fuel so you, you blow up before the finish. The, mar the half marathon is not like this. It's like a drag race. They're going to be able to go. And right now, O'Leary's got the advantage. I mean, she's sitting right on Killel. So unless, unless she's just hanging on for dear life, she could be waiting out kicker. This this could be an outstanding finish. They come around those trees right behind us here at uh, around Discovery Green. And Casey, this is a guy who knows of which he speaks. John Warren was on pace to almost win a Houston Marathon way back when, it, right? Back back in 1997, I thought I need to run a fast pace to try to make a, a, a U.S. team, and it was the year that was the ice storm. Oh, it was the famous oh, ice oh, storm. No. <laughs> so everybody else that was smart decided, you know, I'm just going to run and try to place. So I said, no, I'm going for it. So I was leading through like 10 or 12 miles. I, I got 11th. Now, that's not bad. That's not, that's not bad. bad. No, what and a, I'll, what I'll a what, horrible day. As we watch Caroline Kalel and uh, it is Bayanesh Olira uh, come to the uh, finish line here in the women's half marathon, I have to tell you, I've run five marathons, and at one point I decided, you know, I'm going to go out just for like a half a mile or a mile and run as fast as they do. Well, first of all, I couldn't do it. Wow. As fast as they run the whole marathon, I could barely keep up for about, you know, a half mile. So it is really, really a fast pace. And they run it for a year, 13 is, miles. They're, they're, it's going now. Each other. Yep. Here they go. Look at this, and we're going to watch it here. Oh, they bumped. Woo! Trying to make this turn. And that's allowed, right, John? You all, well, if you do it on purpose, it's not. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> all right, here she goes, and it looks like Bayanesh Olera. I think that's I think her. That's, I think orange. that's right. We'll see as they she, come down she, to the finish line. She, did, she waited for she the kick. She's it. sitting on Kill-El waiting she to make the move. It. Can she make the kick here I, at the end? I don't I, think I, so. I think she's gapped her. I think, I think that move was good enough. But sometimes you don't know. But she's going, she's going all out at this point. Look at this, and here they come down to the and, wire. And again, just crushing the record. Just absolutely crushing the old record by Shalane Flanagan. Wow. Look that, at that, that. 108.27 unofficially, the new course record we think in the women's Aramco half marathon. And a congratulations again. Is that by Anesh Olera? I think it is. It, it's Olera. That's okay. a that's under that's a 5.12 pace. For, for 13.1 miles. I mean, very few people can run a 5.12 pace, men, women, regardless. And they just did it for 13.1 miles. That, that exciting. is exciting. That is just an outstanding run by them. Some of us can barely drive that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to the winners of the half, men and women, right after this. The 40th running of the marathon continues. Aramco Service Company is proud to sponsor the Aramco Houston Half Marathon. Our company has been in Houston for about 35 years. The Houston Marathon is such a great event. Fans from all over the world are tuned to our community. Employees want to be involved. Last year, we had 50 employees run one of the three races. For runners, you're given back to charities, like the American Cancer Society and the Houston Food Bank. 
and uh, about 300 employee, family members, and their friends participated as volunteers. It's a great opportunity to participate in the Houston Landmark events. It's one of the premier marathons in the country. You are not only going to experience excitement, you are going to see some of the world-class runners. And you may see some of your friends and neighbors as well. Enjoy the day and have a good race. I think it's good, yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to ABC 13's live coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon, the Aramco Half Marathon, and the EP5K. We have just watched the finish of the men's and women's half marathon. You're looking at live pace cam coverage of the men's full marathon there. We're going to go straight down to Bob Slovak, who's got the winner of the men's half marathon. Yes, I have the men's winner and the women's winner standing by. They're both from Ethiopia, and I have my translator here to help me out. Your name, sir? Abata. Okay, give me his correct correct pronunciation. Your name is? Uh, uh, my name is Faisal Lelisa. All right, well, congrats. Faisa Lelisa. All right, Fahisa, congratulations. A course record. Tell me about the race and tell me how you were able to run so fast. Uh, uh, yeah. I was very much prepared, you know, for this uh, race, and uh, it was uh, uh, comparatively easier for me. How do you feel about setting the course record? record. Uh, I'm really very happy. This is my best personal uh, best, and uh, I'm glad to have the, achieve this thing. And the women's winner is one of your training partners, right? Uh, yes, she is. Yeah. Congratulations. Great race, great race. We'll, we'll, we'll move right, thank you, sir. We'll move right up here and talk to the women's winner right now. Come on, George, come with me here. <laughs> All right, hold on. They want to take a few more pictures. And I'm going to uh, keep the uh, translator with me here for the uh, women's winner, also from Ethiopia. And she came in in record time as well as they take a few more shots here. And I, I'm always amazed by these half marathoners. They come in and they don't even look winded. She looks like she could uh, run another one. <laughs> All right. We'll come in now. Uh, translator, you want to come in? Do you speak, does she speak English? No? Not really? You want to help? Translator, come on. Come on, come on up here. We'll ask her real quick. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> yes. All right. First of all, first of all, we'll, we'll get the pr a correct pronunciation of her name. Submission Tanagari. My name is Badayne Shalijara. All right. Well, congratulations on a great race. How were you able to run so fast today? Uh, I'm uh, uh, very much, you know, into the 10,000, so uh, that has a speed, so that has helped me a lot today. And a course record? Uh, yeah, bahunu, bahunu. Yahunu, saatish minihallu. Yeah, nobody told me about the time, she said, but uh, she, she ran very fast. She can uh, understand that. Yes, and the smile says it all. Oh, Congre yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. All right, she should have been told that she won an extra $7,500. It's one of those things you want to know, right? She had a little sense of humor about that, didn't she? She, did. she mentioned the idea of being a 10K runner. She has the Ethiopian national record for the road 10K. She's run 3107 on the roads. For, 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 uh, that's five minute pace, so you know, under five minute pace. If we keep up with this string of Ethiopian victories in the Eastern Marathon, we're going to have to have Bob Slovak learn Amharic, which is the Ethiopian <laughs> national language, because then we won't need it. For at least a few greetings. Or for at least a few greetings. <laughs> just, if we say, enough to get by. <laughs> Penestalin, which is hello, and hello. I'm going to say Ganalo is thank you. Look at you. Oh, Again, smarty pants over here. <laughs> back with more of the marathon <laughs> right after this.
Welcome back, everyone. It is a beautiful day in downtown Houston. A little overcast, but really almost perfect running weather for the 13,000 marathon participants, the 11,000 Ramco half marathoners, and then 4,500 people in the El Paso 5K run. I mean, this is just perfect. We just watched a spectacular finish with the men's and the women's half, a record set in right. both of those races. John, amazing. Yeah, their, their, right? goal was, their main goal, they said today, was to try to get records in the half marathon, because normally we, the last number of years, we, this marathon's done the, the national championship, so it's been U.S. only. So they try to bring in a great field. The goal wasn't to get a fast field in the marathon, but they're getting a fast field, fast field in the marathon. The women, the women's leader right now, Abera, she's running under t on, at, at record pace. She's a, two, a sub-224 pace, and the men are at right at, they can't do the half at uh, 63.07, which is actually faster than they ran yesterday in the, uh, in the trials, and that's 206 pace. And they're continuing that through 25K, through 15 miles at this point. The men, and the women, she's still banging off 520s all the way through 14. Fantastic. Amazing. It's got to have something to do with the weather. Let's take you to the turnaround. This is where they make this little turnaround for the half marathon. That's where I have Elisa Rivas this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. We're here with ABC 13 Sonia Azad doing the half marathon close to the nine mile marker. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's great. You know, last year it was raining out here this year. The weather's great. In my opinion, not too hot, not too cold, not slick at all. So it feels so good. You're an avid runner. You've even run the marathon before. Why do you like this distance? You know what? This is easier to train for. It's not as time consuming and frankly, it's not as painful. And, and do you have a personal goal? Well, it's uh, mine is 145. I'm clocking right here, so I'm not using uh, the clock time. I'm using my watch, so we'll see if I make it. All right, good luck to you. We're going to let you go. You. Sonia, good luck. All right, ABC 13, Sonia Azad getting close to the nine-mile marker. And if you can believe it, a lot of people miss this turnaround. There is an entire security team here that is waving people over. The marathon goes straight. The half marathon turns around. They've had to chase some people down that don't turn around for the half. They've had a few marathoners give up and go ahead and take the turn for the half and go on back to the GRB. So it's a crucial point here. Sonia looked like she was doing well, still had lots of energy. So we're looking forward to seeing her at the finish line. Back to you. See the, the volunteers who are looking for the different color bibs. They're looking for those people that have the half marathon bibs on saying, this is where you've got to turn. That is so crucial because we've seen in years past where people make the mistake. Yeah. And especially if you're really trying to, to make a personal best time, you've got a goal in mind, that can really mess you up. And in and, and fairness to the runners that miss it, you're, you're, you're not your normal intelligent self oh. at that point. And nine miles into a half marathon, you're, you're, you're kind of just being a, 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 what do they call it, lemming. You're just kind of following the right. flow. Oh, yeah. And if the flow goes straight, you don't well, yeah, really you're in a zone. Our, you're not yeah. looking for some turnaround. Yeah. Hey, we are going to take you out uh, to Samika Knight. She's out on the course. Uh, we'll go out to Samika there. Good morning, Samika. Good morning, guys. Uh, we are starting to see some of those runners come through. In fact, uh, about 15 or uh, 20 minutes ago, we saw the lead pack of runners. Take a look. You're looking at that ambulance now. Uh, behind, uh, just behind the lead pack of runners, we saw uh, runner Andara is, is how we're told his name is pronounced. Uh, he walked over uh, to that ambulance. He grabbed the back of his leg and uh, he grabbed his chest, we're told, uh, and now he is being transported uh, out of here here. Uh, we, at this point, they believe he's going to be okay. We do not know his condition, but we do know again that he grabbed the back of his leg, uh, and we're also told that he grabbed his chest. We did see him. He was conscious. Uh, he was talking, but he was put in the back of that ambulance, though. So, so uh, our, our thoughts are with him at this point. Uh, but again, we are starting to see a lot of runners, and, and with the runners, we're now starting to see uh, a larger crowd of spectators out here. Uh, take a look at the the runners at this point, uh, a lot of spectators coming out at this point. It, it was pretty quiet earlier, but we are starting to see a few more spectators. Uh, and we found one spectator in particular out here sharing his music. He said uh, that he wanted the, the runners to be able to hear his music uh, and get a little bit more of a pep in his step. So if you'll take a listen here. And Jim, do you mind if we talk to you for a second? Sure. Jim, you talked about, uh, you, you've been doing this for about 10 years. Tell us about that. Oh, well, started out over on Westland and Bissonette, and then uh, we came into, uh, got pushed over here to Ed Lowen University on the new track, and, and 
it's been great every year. It gets bigger and bigger every year, and it's just uh, all the people out here are wonderful. The policemen, the runners, all the spectators and volunteers out here have been great to me. And we do know that a lot of the spectators out here seem to be residents in this area. We're at the halfway mark, 13.1-mile uh, halfway mark near Etlow and the University. A lot of them uh, tend to be residents. But, Jim, as you mentioned, you, you've driven quite a ways to get here, and you've done that for the last 10 years. Tell us where you're from. Well, I'm from Houston originally, but I live in Wharton now, and uh, we've been out there. It's a beautiful town, but uh, come back to Houston every year, and uh, you know, it's, it's specifically it's for this event. Specifically for this event, I have to come back here, and you know, it's there's a lot of music going on around here in Houston, so I come back for different things, events that are going on around here. But specifically, I come here every year just for the, the Houston Marathon. All right, well, Jim, we'll let you continue to share your music uh, with the runners. And, of course, we'll be out here. We'll be watching, uh, again, that runner that we mentioned earlier, Andara. He was put into the back of that ambulance. We do not know his condition at this point, but we're told he is expected to be okay. We'll be back out here, and we'll give you more. But I'm going to send it back to you guys right now. All right, thank you, Sam. And, and thankfully, we have not had really serious injuries in the Houston Marathon before. John Warren can tell you that in Chicago this year, they had one man die of a heart attack. I know in a Florida Marathon, a couple of people. We have not had that kind of thing, but it is a race where it takes endurance, it takes a lot of training, and some people may not be up to that. Right, and a lot of it, when, when, somebody, when that tragedy happens at a marathon, it's really kind of bad luck that the timing was just yeah. happened to be that day. The, the effort probably was the catalyst for it, but it, there's just so many people now. It does happen, but it's a rare. McDonald and Dara was one of the rabbits in the race. Okay. He was one of the pace setters throughout. The, he took him through what he was supposed to. They wanted him to get through about 18 miles, but 15 is pretty good. And uh, my understanding now is that there are no more rabbits in the race. They're, they're, I mean, when they hate to be make a bad joke, but when they say he dropped, I mean... Yeah. Sound like you yeah. dropped. Right. It didn't wish him the best. Well, and one of the things we've talked about today is how the weather has really been perfect. The overcast skies, light wind, temperatures have been just perfect. We're going to get you an update on the current conditions plus a look at the forecast. We're going to take you back to the ABC 13 studios. Uh, meteorologist David Tillman standing by. Good morning, David. Good morning, Casey. Yeah, the clouds are actually helping things out just a bit, keeping temperatures in the low middle 40s right now. Outside of the Beltway system, we're seeing 30s this morning. It's 37 in Klein, 33 in Humble. But where the course is, at this time, 43 degrees at Memorial Park and 45 in downtown. So temperatures are still hovering in the comfortable low and middle 40s. I still do believe at about 9 to 930, we'll be approaching 50 degrees and about 11 a.m. this morning, 55 to 57 degrees. Overall, a perfect morning for the marathon. Casey. Thanks so much, David. Yeah, as we've talked about, elite runners especially love to see these kind of cooler temperatures anywhere from kind of upper 30s to low 40s. And they're going to be completely finished before temperatures get super warm. It's the folks who maybe aren't so elite that may right. have to battle those 50s as right. they're finishing up. Right, but, he, but you know, it could be much worse here. Oh. We've been years where it's been wonderful for the elites. We've been sitting here freezing. And then you wander on the course at like noon, and it's yeah. it's seventy something degrees. Well, that sun, David's right. I mean, that cloud cover helps keep those temperatures down. As long as we keep the clouds, temperatures will stay cool. Oh, and what's amazing, this is it's weird. It's it's not only pleasant for the runners, it's pleasant for us. It's that nice balance. I don't know about you guys. I've got on triple layers this morning, so I'm feeling okay. But if I just had on a little light clothes like you fellas, I might be might not be doing so cashmere well. long johns. <laughs> well, I've got cashmere and then silk on top of that, then some regular pants. All right, don't tell me you're wearing cashmere. Okay, that'd be too much. Fortieth <laughs> running. Of the marathon. Don't knock it. More it's good. After this. <laughs> But what about the course itself and some of the nice spots you like to run through? Uh, the best spot I've seen is in the, it's at the Med Center. We're going through the West U. Um, we're crazy to be out that time of morning running. But the spectators, they got to be insane. I love Memorial. So once we hit Memorial, it's all high from there. Oh, uh, University Boulevard. Do you yeah. like that one? Yeah. Why? Uh, a lot of people giving uh, candies, uh, cookies, uh, water, or uh, uh, petroleum, um, everything, and it's a lot of people on the street. In the street, so for me, it's fantastic. Back here to the 40th running of the Chevron Houston Marathon and the Aramco Half Marathon as we go to the pace camps for both the men and women. On the right, the elite woman's leader. And, John, we are looking at who this morning? That is, her last name is Abera. It's Alameda Abera. 
who uh, has run a 226, but she's on pace right now to run 222. That would be, uh, the record is, is 223.50 something, and she's on pace to kill that. And she keeps dropping faster and faster miles. Her last mile was 518. Uh, the, the Rabbit's obviously doing an outstanding job just, just pulling her along. On the men's side, we still got three uh, three athletes in this. Demisa uh, Sega, Teraku Jafar, and uh, Dabibi Tolosa. And the fastest one, Jafar, he's run a 208.10 back in 08, but he hasn't done anything anywhere close to this in years. No one, the other two are 209 guys. They're on 206 pace right now. Wow. And the course record, of course, 207.43 set last year by no, also... No, 207.04. 207.04, excuse me. So they've, they've got to run essentially a 206 to get the record, but they're like on 206.30, 206.40 pace. So most likely once they get to the hills of Allen Parkway, they'll drop down a little bit. But there are three, so they... The rabbits are gone, so they could be helping each other, or somebody sitting in the back could be the one that's getting a little bit of uh, uh, benefit. Remember, last year's winner was ran like a 29-minute, 29-10, last 10K. He, he was running 440 pace for the last six miles. Wow. So if somebody's feeling like that, who knows what they could do. I, I wouldn't expect that out of, out of this crew, but we didn't expect it out of the winner last year. No, we certainly didn't. Well, but we're still about 40 minutes or so from seeing the winner in the men's marathon. 35, 35 yeah. 35. Right. And we're, we've already seen everyone pull away. So these are pretty much the people that we're going to watch to the win this. The rest of the way, yes. Right? Yes, there's not going to be one of the... We're going to only follow the winner, obviously, and if one or two of these guys blow up, not all three will. Okay. This is the area. They're getting in the realm where, where, where if something's going to go bad, it's going to go bad now. Um, but I would be surprised if it happens to all three. I think it's going to be a very fast pace, probably in the 207s, but it does have a shot to break the, the course record. Now, Abera is on... Um, I mean, she could blow up, too, but if she doesn't blow up, she will get the course record. Wow. She's still got a lot, a lot longer to go, though. I mean, she, she's, got, she's pushing about nine miles to go at this point. Okay. okay. Well, well, we've talked about the charities, 57 charities, $12.5 million raised and run for a reason since this thing began 17 and years ago. It's just so amazing. And what we often hear from folks is that it's taken a tragedy in their lives for everybody to pull together, yeah. all the friends, all the family. And the Barry family is a family you've heard about in the news so much, and the support for them is is just amazing and a lot of the folks supporting the Berry family are out here running today. Thousands of strangers are coming to the aid of three Houston children orphaned earlier this month. Uh, I was pretty much in shock. Uh, I was very surprised, I was very close with Josh and Robin and when I first got the call uh, I, I wouldn't let myself believe it and then as more and more calls came in uh, I, I realized that the, the worst was true. It was surreal. It was surreal. It was, uh, you know, we, we were even you know, we were with the boys uh, a week prior, they were, and they were even talking about the, their excitement of going to, to a uh, uh, their trip to Colorado. It was absolutely disbelief. And I knew that uh, we'd have to help out somehow through, through various causes in the community. Three children who lost their parents in a car crash are receiving an outpouring of support from friends and from strangers. Robin and Josh participated in the half marathon last year. They were, uh, Robin was really dedicated to getting Peter to start running 5Ks and she ran actively with him. And then after this, we decided that it would really be, you know, an honor to be able to run this in their name. When we learned about the, uh, the team Barry for different running events, especially for the uh, Houston Marathon and the Half Marathon, I thought that's a perfect uh, way to also uh, help contribute. As you know, the marathon has always been a great vehicle for supporting, for supporting different charities. And you know, as you know, there's been many, many uh, fundraisers for the Barry family. And as time goes on, we're realizing that uh, their needs are, their financial needs are going to be, are going to be great. How are you all today? Enjoy watching practice? Yeah. Uh, it's a good cause. It's helping a local family uh, that's uh, suffered an immeasurable tragedy. Uh, it's been a real community effort uh, with different events, different uh, uh, gatherings, and this is just another one where it's been sustained, uh, where they can you know, join a group of uh, individuals who are trying to support the same cause. Ultimately, I think we're looking also for some like recognition in terms of children with spinal cord injuries. We'd like to see Team Barry participating in other runs around the nation that help benefit fit kids with spinal cord injuries. As I imagine it'll be uh, you know more emotional. You know, last year was emotional just because it was my first one, and this one, you know, because it has such meaning, and because I remember last year and sort of spending the finish with Josh and Robin, uh, this year will uh, really hit home. Absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely like part of the training. Whenever it starts dragging on those long runs, you know, we're there. There's a reason. We're part of the team. We're doing this, and we're doing it together. So absolutely. Because it's going to be special for many. It's obviously a, a personal accomplishment, but also realizing that the, when you when you when you cross the finish line, it's you've accomplished a goal greater than yourself. I mean, you're 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 supporting, uh, you're really supporting a, a family uh, in addition to just making a personal accomplishment. 
And we say, you go, Team Barry. We also have to say, you go, Team Gary, as in Kubiak and the Texans today. Oh. More after this. Yeah. downtown Houston, I should say, the city of Houston for our running of the marathon. And we have the uh, elite runners now on our pace cams to the right, the woman's elite runner. And I say woman, I should say, because she's all by herself out there in the lead and to the left, the men's elite runners. John Warren, we see uh, she may be able to set a record here. She's really on pace to do that today. Right. She's on pace to break it by quite a bit. I mean, like I mentioned before, Allen Parkway's got some hills on it and, the, and the, the final few miles are actually quite challenging. But she has had no problem at all clicking off anyone from 518 which is well under pace. She needs to get it to get the course record. She needs to run under 530, wow. and she's got a bunch of miles under 530. Her last mile split, obviously, was 533. So she she could, she's got some play room. She can keep between 530 and 535. She'll get the she'll get the course record. Is it surprising that she's all by herself at this point in the race? It isn't surprising based on the time she's running. Okay. It, but what is surprising is that she can run this time. She ran here two years ago in 2010 and ran 231, which is again outstanding. It's an Olympic A standard. But she's going to be, you know, a mile and a half ahead of what she ran two years ago. So that, that improvement curve was unbelievable. Now, granted, she was only 21 then. She's only 23 now. It's not like she's old. But, uh, but the idea to drop eight minutes is, is going to be a very impressive performance from her. And it's been all her the whole time. Because there's good people in this field. And they were hoping to go. They were talking about 225. And that was sounded funny on paper that they could do it. But like I mentioned, the men's marathon is the same way. On paper, 206, 207 doesn't make any sense. And they're well on the way to do that. All right, we'll talk about the pack of men's elite runners in just a second. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, we, there's so many people involved in the marathon. There are volunteers out here. We, we've heard about some of the folks who are doing Run for a Reason, where they're raising money for a charity. And every runner that comes out here to run gets a bag full of goodies. got all kinds of good stuff in there, useful information. And the goodie bags are put together by a group of very special folks that I got to spend some time with. For the Houston Marathon, we've been work, uh, stuffing the bags since 2007. This is our fifth year. The center, located right off Allen Parkway along the Marathon race route, is a place where special needs adults live and work. One of the focuses that we train our clients or our, our workers on is knowing that what they do is meaningful to the community. They are part of Houston and they're contributing to the business environment of the city. So tell me, what are you actually, what's your job today? My job is to put these two items in this bag and pass it to her and she puts it in the box right there. We have about 150 employees working uh, nonstop for four weeks now. Um, their basic work day is nine to three, so it's a pretty intensive, pretty busy time for them. When you think about the people who are gonna see the bags and open them up, what do you think about those people? I think that they're gonna say, thank you for giving these things in the bags. Am I excited? Today we're doing um, the Chevron Marathon for 2011. We do it every year, and it brings us good money. So you guys are actually going to make money off of this? Yes, we do. That's kind of exciting. Yes, it is. I mean, you guys aren't doing this alone. You're no, kind of we're a not. team, right? We're a team here. We do everything. Yeah. How does it make you feel to have kind of a cool job for the marathon. It's fantastic. It really is. It brings me joy to come here to work and I love the people here. Aww. Yeah. In a small way they're a very big part behind the scenes participants of the marathon race. How does it feel um, to be able to do this? Is it fun? Is it hard work? Fun. It's fun. I like it. I love helping out. It's exciting. Our workers know that they make a difference in, in, in Houston by the work that they do. Fantastic. 7,500 volunteers, and those are just a few of them, Casey. Just a few of them. They are volunteers, Tom. They're getting paid. So oh, the folks okay. at the center, they got paid to put those goodie bags together. He was and right. They were making they money. They were making money. It's a job for them, and, and they train for it, uh, and they learn how to put everything in the bag. It was just very cool. Super, super cool. And they're out on the race route today, uh, right. supporting some of the runners. Big fans of racing. Uh, a lot of them. Well, again, a shout out to the 7,500 volunteers who don't yes. get paid <laughs> that show up today to help disperse the water and keep the crowds uh, going where they're supposed to go and we'll go right here to a break and come back with more after this
Welcome back to the 40th running of the Chevron Houston Marathon. I'm Tom Cook along with Casey Curry and John Warren, the Rice University track coach. As we wait for the elite marathoners to come close to the finish line, and we do have a race out there this morning. We'll bring you more on that in just a second. Well, and the weather has been perfect. I just oh. got a text message from meteorologist David Tillman back in the Weather Center, and it's 46 degrees here downtown. Memorial Park at 44. So even as we're getting towards the end of the actual marathon for the elite runners, the weather just couldn't be perfect. Mother it, Nature's it's looking out awesome. for us. And we may get a record of uh, Jafar just broke away from everybody when he threw in a 430 mile. Wow. It was a 505 at mile 20. He said, that's enough. 430, let's get serious. That's, again, that's five. That's 14 flat 5K. All right, that's about 20 minutes away. That's the finish of the men's marathon, or the first place finishers, I should say. As we said, a huge race weekend here in Houston. Actually, a huge sports weekend right. here in Houston. We got the Texans coming up at noon today. We have this incredible sporting event. And yesterday, the Olympic trials went on here in Houston. And our reporter, Hugh Lewis, has more on that. The top runners in the U.S. were in Houston for the 2012 Olympic trials. This was the first time the men's and the women's qualifying occurred on the same day on the same course. Fans from around the nation were here to cheer the runners on. It's really cool. I mean, well, we're from Little Rock, Arkansas, but it's awesome that it was so close for us to be able to travel down here and see our friend Leah run and see all these great elites run and uh, to see the Olympic team formed right here in Houston. It's great. He talked you into wearing that week? No. <laughs> Leah did. <laughs> We're from San Francisco. We're from Michigan. And Jennifer. Jennifer. Jennifer! Woo! <laughs> and that's our daughter in law and her daughter. Here they come. Both races were tight until the final stretch run. Meb Kafleji took control of the last two miles to beat Ryan Hall and Abdi Abdi Rahman. Kafleji won in 20908. He was greeted at the finish line by his dad who hoisted him up on his shoulder. It's a tradition when you do something really well or special to put somebody on your shoulder. And they did that at my wedding, many people do that, and you know, it's a special occasion. And he did that in high school at the Full Locker, and screaming out saying, I'm proud of my son, I'm proud of my son. And he's saying, USA Today, USA, USA, USA. The women qualifiers were led by Shalane Flanagan in a time of 2.25.38, which was three minutes better than her personal best. Desiree Davila and Kara Goucher will join her in London. It was a day of triumph for some and heartbreak for others. And Bob Slovak is uh, with one of our folks that's going to be representing the United States at the Olympics uh, in London. We'll say hello to Bob. All right, thank you very much. I actually have two of our Olympians that are headed to London to run. I have Meb Kapleski. Is that how you say it? You got it right. I got it right. First place yesterday. I have I, this guy has a great name for any sport. Abdi Abdi Rockman. Yes. I love yes. that name. Yes. That is thank awesome. You. That is awesome. Talk about yesterday's race. You just mentioned the flags aren't waving today. Yesterday a little breezy, but both you guys ran great races. It was a great day yesterday for both of us and including Ryan Hall on the men's side and the women's side. We had a phenomenal. We're going to do our best to represent uh, to go to London and represent our country. Country. Yeah, how's it feel to, to be a U.S. Olympian? Oh man, just to be, I'm, this is my fourth, Olymp fourth Olympic team and to be an Olympian never gets old. You know, it's amazing what you guys, when you can represent your country, your friends and, you know, when you can represent your country, how does, it doesn't get better than that, yeah. It doesn't get better, yeah. A, a awesome, awesome feeling. Great day for your family. Your dad picked you up. You had everybody out here. Oh, my dad picked me up when I was in high school in 1993, and he did the same thing now, 19 years later. It was just awesome day for my daughters and uh, my, my parents to be here. And, you know, I didn't make the 2008 Olympics like Abdi did, but this was a good time for us to connect again and be able to rejuvenate what my family has worked hard for. And uh, it was a great community for Houston and the fans, and the crowd was phenomenal. Uh, thanks to all the volunteers and all the community for hosting us the men and women trials and hopefully we can do very well in London. Yeah, you mentioned the crowd and it, there was a lot of fans down here. Now, you came in third. Were you getting coached along the way how close the fourth place guy was? <laughs> to be honest, I didn't know. People were screaming, but I thought they were screaming for me and I just found out people were screaming because the guy was coming. <laughs> you know, but as I, said, I know Data was coming and, he, and he's a tough runner and that's all, that's, that's just competition, you know. 
sometimes you just gotta toughen up and that's what I did, you know, I ran on my heart and Dayton won hard, he got fourth place. I know it's not a good place to be in the fourth place, but uh, you know, yeah. I'd rather take the third than fourth, so. Okay, all right, so one, two, and three all qualified for the US Olympics. Real quickly now, who's gonna win in, in London between you two guys? <laughs> you know, it's competition, we're just gonna do our best every time, you know, the, the training is a rigorous, a hard part of it. And as long as we can stay healthy, we're gonna push each other, with, including with Ryan, and to give our 110 percent effort. That'll be fun, huh? Yeah, but it's gonna be great, you know, like, to be honest, like a lot of people think we're like a metal threat because they think the Kenyans and Ethiopians are real fast. I know they're talent, but at the same time, that's why they run the race. You know, if you, if they think the Kenyans are going, they should just give the medals away to Kenya. <laughs> so that's why they don't have to run. The reason they run the race is so they're going to find the man who is the best that day. In 2004, if, you, if anyone remember, Meb got the silver medal, but at the same time coming to that race, he wasn't even like a mention into the top 20. There and none going on. He got the medal, so anything, anything is possible that day. We're just going to go out there, healthy and, healthy and ready to go. Anything can happen. Yeah, do not count the U.S. out when it comes to the L London Marathon. Hey, congratulations, guys. All right, we're proud of you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Back to you guys. Hey, yes. Bob, wait, real quick. I want to, okay. can you ask Meb really quickly? I read in the media guide that his first date with his wife was when he came home from Athens, where he won a medal. And he took her to Olive Garden, and he gave her... No, that's not the best part of the story. He gave her the flowers that he got when he got the medal. I okay. want to know how he got those flowers home on that plane. All right, Casey, Casey up on the on the desk up there, she said, your first date with your wife was when you came home from Athens, and you gave her the flowers that you got in, in Athens? That is correct, Kate. Uh, uh, I had a 440 fly from Athens, and I, the bouquet they gave out at the podium, I carried that for our first date. Oh. So that's very true. So that's, I know now that's a pretty good first date. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's birth birthday is on Tuesday, and my mom's birthday is today, so it's a great way to celebrate on our next Olympics. Oh, that is awesome. See? Fantastic. All right, all right. Love it. Tipped all the single guys out there. How about that? Thanks, man. See, you can take your girl to Olive Garden if you bring her the flowers from your Olympic medal. If you win a sil an Olympic <laughs> silver medal, just go. win an Olympic silver medal, you can get a date. You got that right. Kiss Fleggy, Rockman, and Hall, USA, USA. Back with more after this. The Chevron Houston Marathon is one of the biggest projects that we're involved with. It's a citywide event. It draws people from all over the world. One minute, one minute to go, the second round. Let's hear it from you. Are you ready? We have over 400 employees who are volunteering. Last year, Chevron employees volunteered over 27,000 hours out in our community. The most important things is being part of the community, being part of the fabric of Houston. Efforts like this. 100 bags per penny. When I see my people and myself get so excited because what we realize is our opportunity to give back to many of those of Houstonians that really can use the help that we're giving here. We are also part of the society in which we, we live. So we are not doing it just for the company, we are doing it for the society in which we do business, in which we live, uh, and, and which we are part of it. Some of those projects included building two houses for Habitat for Humanity, sorting thousands of pounds of food at the Houston Food Bank, and planting a large community garden. The Chevron Houston Marathon is the largest one-day sporting event in Houston. We have lots of employees running. We also have running clubs, local running clubs, both here in Houston. Uh, if you go overseas, they have local running clubs. There's clubs in San Ramon, uh, so the clubs participate in local races. We train a couple times a week, so it's, uh, it's quite a group. And especially as a Chevron employee, it's just a fantastic experience. And the crowd support along the way, I mean, you're out there with a lot of friends running. And then also out in the community, you see a lot of your friends and family. And it's just very well run, too. To all the rest of the runners, we want you to do wonderful as well. And we know there's going to be lots of spectators out there cheering them on. So let's make it a terrific day. For the seventh year in a row, it is called the Chevron Houston Marathon. We could not do it without our title sponsor. And Greg Vesey with Chevron Natural Gas, the president of that division, is here this morning. What's it like to be part of this biggest single-day sporting event? It's just tremendously exciting, Tom. I mean, you know, when you an event that feels so good for the city of Houston, 
and, and seeing the volunteer effort that comes out for this. You know, the, the total volunteer count is huge, but at Chevron alone, we've got some 800 people running or participating or volunteering. And, and just the energy around that, I was, we were talking earlier, it's amazing, but every year it seems to be at a higher level. Yeah. It's just amazing. Well, and do you find, even at work, that maybe people who never were interested in running before, now that you guys are involved in the Houston Marathon, maybe sparked a little interest for them? Absolutely, absolutely. It goes up every year. And one of the things you, about 30 days before the marathon, they put up these big simulated marathon bars in our offices. And you walk through it every day and it counts down um. 29 days, 28 days. And it actually generates that fear. Yes, we get bigger, bigger, <laughs> you say bigger. Fear? Fever. Oh, fever. You no, said fear. fear. It yeah. generates fear. <laughs> no, the, 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 the fever to run. And uh, I have a few folks in my shop. I'm going to watch them. They're running the half today, working their way up to try eventually at the marathon. Now, don't you think this should start from the top down, though? Don't you think the chairman and all the division presidents should be running the race today? <laughs> I could make a, make a lot of enemies by agreeing with that. Tom. <laughs> okay. But I will tell you, one of our top executives, Danny Roden from California, is running in the marathon again. He's head of our lubricants company, and he is running the full Fantastic. marathon. So we all have, are spiritually with Danny running okay. the race all right. today. All right, good answer. Yeah. A good answer. Nice. So how does it feel uh, to be out here? Do you feel like a good little sense of pride having so oh, many of your folks? yeah. Yeah, tremendous. You know, the, the Chevron focuses on human energy because around the world, it's really our people that are making the difference. And that holds over to the marathon. I mean, this is all about human energy. So when you feel, I mean, you see it and you come on the ground, you just feel the energy here. And yes, it, it feels great to be a part of it. And I, will, I love telling people, if you're watching on TV, look at that big suite of people having fun at the finish line. That's all of us at Chevron supporting people. Yeah, anybody going to get a break on Monday who participated today? Yeah, do you give or them a little bit of a... To Late start, if yeah. you will. Or yeah, rub down, I'm, sure, maybe. I'm sure we'll all turn the turn our cheek away for a day or two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Vizi with uh, Chevron Natural Gas, the president of that division. Thank you. We uh, we hope Chevron sticks with us for many many more years because without you, we could not put on this incredible. It's event. a great event. We're glad to be here, and we really appreciate your support as well. You guys do a great job helping us with the event. Well, thank you. We're having fun. We love doing it. It is so fun. Great. It all is right. Fun. Thanks Chevron so much. Houston Marathon for the seventh year in a row, and we'll be back with more from downtown Houston after this. Welcome back, everybody. It's the 40th anniversary of the Houston Marathon. We've got live coverage this morning of the Chevron Houston Marathon, the Aramco Half Marathon, which is already finished up, and the EP5K. You're looking at live looks here from Sky Eye HD. This is our lead runner in yeah, the Tarek men's... Yeah, Jafar from Ethiopia, all by himself, broke out of the pack. Yeah, because there was a pack of three elite runners there, right. and now he's broken away all by and himself. And where are we in the race here, They're, they're within the, almost within the last mile. I mean, they're right. They're right up to getting to finishing. I mean, he, he's moving pretty good right now. He threw in. They threw a 505 mile in at their 20th mile. So he decided to run a 430 mile for his 21st mile, and that dropped uh, Sega. And then Tolosa caught back up for a while, and then he dropped him in the last couple miles here. And he's all alone coming in. He's definitely going to PR. He's got a 208.10 uh, best from 08. So it's been four years since he's PR. And this is definitely going to be. Well, I shouldn't say definitely. It probably is going to be under that. It's going to be close to. It's a course record or not. 207.04, so he's got to get in the 206 range to uh, actually hit the course record. All right. Well, we will not miss the winners coming across in both the men's and the women's marathon, but we want to send you down to Bob Slovak. He's with one of our own favorite runners, Eyewitness News reporter Sonia Azad. Yeah, Sonia just finished up the uh, half marathon, and I, she needs to get inside, so we will make this quick. You look great. How do you feel? Oh, I'm sure I look great. Yeah, thanks a lot, Bob. Uh, no, I feel good. You know, I came in, uh, according to my watch, at 150, which is, you know, I wanted to come in at 145, so uh, I guess I need to uh, do a little more speed training. I'm guilty of not doing enough of it. Yeah, and how many half marathons is this now? Uh, this is number nine or ten. Hey, that's great when you forget how many you run. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great race. You know what? The weather was perfect. It wasn't slick, not too hot, not too cold. Uh, everyone outside was dressed in red and blue for the Texans. Everyone was cheering, go Texans. You know, it was really fun. Great race. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Go get some rest. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys. And, and remember, Sonia, it is better to look good than to feel good. Okay? It's true. How cute is she? She had on all of her Texans gear. And I don't know if you guys saw it when Elisa interviewed her at the halfway point there. She's got on her, like, tube socks, her old school, yeah. school like, football socks, yeah. the white with the blue. Yeah. So cute. 
wearing those high compression socks, though. I don't know if that was a pair of those. I don't know. I have a feeling hers might have been for yeah. fast. We have <laughs> eyewitness news reporter Jessica Willie also running the half marathon, and our anchor that. Adele Uchida running the entire marathon trying to qualify for Boston. We'll check in with them, too. Now we have Ted Oberg out of the race course in downtown Houston waiting on the uh, elite runners here. Ted, good morning to you once again. Yes. First two men in the marathon just passed us, blew by us here. Uh, the marathon course pretty wide open. That's on the left side here uh, of Lamar as you look headed into downtown. And all of these people here uh, have just about a mile to go in the half marathon. And a fair amount of smiles here. There you go. There they are. They're almost done. They're feeling good. And Casey, you were talking about Sonia and her Texans gear. There are plenty of people out here in their Texans gear. There's a Brian Cushing jersey that just passed us. Plenty of Andre Johnson jerseys. Plenty of Texan fans running this course, trying to get off here, out of the traffic, and back home uh, so that they can uh, see kickoff for the game here. And just, hey, how you feeling? How you feel? I feel great. Less than a mile to go. Yeah. Great job. That was sort of nice to stop. Way to go. Anyway, it's a great morning. It's warmed up a little bit here. Last year when we were through here, uh, right at the start of downtown, there was just a ton of wind. Uh, this morning, practically no wind at all. It feels great. It's felt great all morning. Uh, and almost all of these runners uh, have, have a great smile on their face. Look at this guy. How old is he? Nine years old, finishing the half marathon here, looking good. Saw a little girl, probably eight or nine years old, who uh, blew by us about a half an hour ago. It's just a great morning. Uh, uh, and, and really has been a lot of fun to be a part of this year. Tom? Uh. It really has, Ted. And I also want to give a shout out to Justin Sternberger, our special projects producer, who is also running the full marathon again today. And then he'll be producing the finish line, our half hour special at 1035 tonight. So join us then. Watch yourself. Watch one lo loved ones or friends on the race course. It's really going to be a spectacular show tonight at 1035. Well, and we want to encourage you folks, if you're sitting at home watching the marathon with us, and maybe you've got some questions for us, you know, for Tom or I, but especially for our running expert, John Warren, Rice University track coach. Uh, he is here to answer your questions, and especially once we do get the winners coming across, we'll have a little more time to kind of take in some of your questions about maybe how do you train for a marathon? Maybe what kind of food you should eat? All of those sorts of things. We would love to hear your questions. You can get them to us on Facebook or on Twitter. I've got all of my devices up here, so we won't miss any of them. Uh, so let us know if you've got some questions for us. All right, this is Taraku Jafar of Ethiopia, our lead runner in the marathon today. And, John, he is burning some rubber right here, just about, what, half a mile from the finish line. He, uh, he hopes it's short. I'm not 100% sure, but he, I'm, hope, I'm thinking he hoped it's shorter than that because if it's less than half, he might get the course record. He is flying right now. You can, second of all, you could see how far back the uh, the competitive competition was, which isn't that far. So there's a chance there might be two 207s today, the way they're running this race. He should be getting to Discovery Green any moment now. Um, either way, like I said, he's going to have a, a PR, a personal best in the marathon. The question is whether he's going to have a course record today. And it's going to be really close, I think. Because he should be coming into, our, into the Discovery Green, I think, as he crosses this street. You're right. 20704 is what he has to beat to set a new Houston Marathon record. And as John Warren tells us, he looks like he is on pace to do just that. He should be turning the corner and making the home stretch here in just about another 30 seconds or so. He probably hopes it's another 15 seconds because he's got to shave off that time. Yeah. The women are also on pace, and we'll get to them in a few minutes to set a, perhaps a new course record. Yeah, they're the lead bikes. Kind of, we can see him coming around that turn right now. There he is. It's going to be really close. All right, here he, he comes. If he's looking at his watch right now coming in. He, it is going to be, uh, uh, he's going to try to kick. He's going to go as fast as he possibly can. And for people at home watching, the folks on the left-hand side, those who are half marathon are kind of everyday folks uh, that are running. And so they've separated it out so he doesn't have any issues getting by all of those folks. Oh, he can see the clock now, too. This is going to be very, very close. He knows he's got to beat 207.04 to set the new record. A $10,000 bonus is his if he does cross it. Here we go. We'll see if... Teraku Jafar. Oh, he, he's going to do it. He's going to run 206. This is, th this is ridiculously fast. This is Chicago, London ty type times. And we're going to see a second place finisher in 207 for sure. This is un unbelievable. Here we go. Unbelievable pace. 27 year old Ethiopian in 206.50. Unofficially, he has set a new course record by 14 seconds. We'll see if someone else sets one at 207. No one else is going to break the tape before the old course record. But as John said, we'll get another one of the top runners in here, probably in the 207 range. Right behind him until he broke out of the pack were Demesu Sega and uh, Debebe Tolosa, who also both from uh, Ethiopia. Right. And, and Tolosa is going to run a 207 today as well. That's just, that's just, just a stupendous to have two, a 206 and a 207 
in any race. Well, as we watch the winner uh, who's come across the line now, we'll try to get Bob to get down there and have a chat with him. But as we uh, watch him kind of recover here, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon on ABC 13. December of 1972, the first Houston Marathon, won by Danny Green among a field of 113 runners. And as you take a look at the running shorts and the outfits, which were obviously <laughs> a lot different back then, so were the running shoes. Technology has come so far wow. in terms of what people can do with their feet. But we do have some examples of what it was like to run back then. I can't believe we have this. This is amazing video. That was great. I think this is so super cool. And, and, and when you think about where the marathon was 40 years ago and the world-class event that it is now, that's just amazing. Yeah, it is. Okay, we talked about the technology that has come so far to help people get these incredible times. But some of the shoes back then look like some of the shoes today. This is an old running, well, I was going to say running flat, but it almost just has a piece of cardboard on the bottom, John. This is a, an Adidas, right? But you that's have... A, uh, that was probably a Tiger back then. If it was Tiger, then Anatsuka Tiger. Now it's Asics. All right. Now, this Brad Koch is the race director, has been for many, many years, does this incredible job of running this race. This was his shoe. The right. Nike... Uh, I think it's called the Blaze. Blaze. A Blaze. Look at that. Is that a beautiful shoe? He ran on this, and look at how flat the soles were. Wow. And this was just actually a typical running shoe from back then. But you know what? It's sort of back to the future, because here are some of those new running flats. Oh, this yeah. is a new running flat. It's actually a toe push, if I can show that. Oh, you wow. see, you push off on your toes, right? Or right, off that, on your That's the new forces strike. you to be up on the ball of your foot. On the ball of your yep. foot. So this is really almost as stiff as the old running shoes, but what would it be like, John, to run a marathon and something like that? Well, What's ironic is yeah. this is back in style because the, the, the whole barefoot running thing, a lot of companies coming out with shoes that, ha that are very, like this one and this one, they're very little different between the back and the front yeah. and there's very little support. So it's kind of funny, you know, we've gone to all these different things in higher technology, but now what a lot of people want, most people shouldn't wear, but a lot of people People want our shoes that don't are that aren't modern that are actually throwbacks yeah, and then they run in those shoe gloves right the, the, the vibe with five fingers yeah the five fingers it's really yeah. unbelievable some people also into that barefoot running altogether I don't know how they do it given, I don't the, pay, either. given the streets here I, I would be a mess yeah. absolutely a mess yeah. uh, well we're gonna go down to Bob Slovak he has our winner yes. from the men's marathon new record out there yes thank you very much uh, Tariku Jafar is our winner he's here he's from Ethiopia we have our translator with us again to help us out ask him about the race and I Ask him about pulling away from the pack. And that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Rucha or Masmar. And that's why we don't want to run the whole thing. 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 Uh, the weather was, was very uh, favorable for me, and I was uh, ready in my mind also to uh, make a, a better timing. Uh, so I was uh, putting a drive in myself. Uh, we saw him sprint down the final straight straightaway there for a course record. Ask him about setting the course record. In Dayton also, Yazi Gize, but I'm a Shashilawa. And now, Machar Shalai, but I'm a throat in a barra. Dayton a barra, Miss Samma. Bakasatu Lama Shashar Sun was throat in a barra. And then, yeah, Lenny Mount, a conjugate, I'm Salona, Lolum Picum, Turusat, and Wailing, and get each alone in Shalom or Nobazisat. I have uh, yeah, a drive, you know, to be a part of the Ethiopian team for the Olympics also. And uh, I have to uh, put much effort in the sprint in the last uh, uh, part of the uh, race, and I'm happy about that. You did an awesome job. Course record 206.50, I think, was the time. Let's bring in Miss Judy from Chevron now with the uh, presentation of the uh, championship, Stetson. On behalf of Chevron, I'd like to present you with your medal. Congratulations. And your championship hat. Ah, there you go. There you go. Congratulations. And there you have. 
have it. Yeah, yeah, I think we got the hat. The hat was on backwards, but ah, there you go. And the, the smile once again says it all. You're a, a marathon champion for a Chevron Marathon champion for 2012. And we'll be right back with more coverage of the Chevron Marathon right after this. live coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon. We've already seen the winners come through on the men's and women's half and the men's full marathon. Now we are awaiting the women's marathon winner. I'm Casey Curry here with Tom Cook and our running expert, John Warren. John, talk about uh, what we're, we're seeing here, a live look from Sky Eye HD. This is clearly not uh, the woman right. leader. We'll see her with the pace cam in just a minute. Right. This is they're about they're about to have a sweep today. They're going to get records in all four major really? races. Really amazing. The, and, and big records too. I mean, they amended off in the uh, on the uh, half and uh, a few seconds in the in the men's half. A big big chunk in the men's full men's full. And she's a bear out there right now is pushing to break 223. She faded a little bit in the 24th mile, so most likely she won't. But if she has a big kick, she's going to be close to getting into the 222s today. It's Elmita Abera from Ethiopia, 26 years old, broke away from the pack early on and has stayed that way. Right, and her PR is 226, so it's going to be a pretty big chunk off her time, too. You're looking at the men's winner and the women's winner to be cutting three minutes off their best. Fantastic. We just love breaking records here, and of course, the winners get $35,000 for the marathon, both the men and the women a ten thousand dollar bonus as well if they break the course record and we already saw in the men's division he has gotten a forty five thousand dollar paycheck today well and what you're looking at from a live look here this is the finish line and on the left hand side you're seeing you're seeing a lot of the half marathon uh, folks kind of your everyday runners these aren't actually bad times uh, for a half marathon no. they're coming in over on the left hand side and then on the right is where they've kind of left the space so that the elite runners can come through uh, without any problems Okay, we'll be back with more after this. back to our live coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon. We better bring out the brooms because we're about to get a sweep of all the records today. New records in the men's and women's half and a new record set today in the men's marathon. Now we're awaiting 26-year-old Alamitu Abera of Ethiopia to set a new women's record. John, about a minute away or so. Here she makes uh, I, I think less than that. I think we're going to see her any time now. Two, two, she's sprinting in at this point. It's going to be close to 222, most likely be 223 low. The old record was 223.53, and she's going to beat it by quite a bit. Probably 40, 50 seconds would be the guess. We should see her cross the line any moment now. It, it's, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and that was her pace set. That was her so pace. That was her rabbit. That okay. was, usually they try not to be involved with the finish, but that was kind of a dramatic stop for him. And here she's she goes. crossed her the line right now. 226.33, so she'll beat that by, by three. three minutes. Alamitu Abera of Ethiopia, our winner today, $45,000 in her pocket. Her rabbit took her out at that pace, and she held it the entire day. 528 is the average pace. She had some miles under, you know, in the 5 teens, even a 509, a few in the 540s, but really hitting the five, mid-520s almost the entire way. The rabbit did a stupendous job, and she looks like she could do it again. Wow. That, she just looks awesome. She does. And that was pretty dramatic at the end. Not only did her rabbit kind of trip a little bit, but there was also someone running who shouldn't have been over in that elite area. Did oh, is you that see right? No, I think that was over? one of the elite men, though. Was it? Because they yeah, were pushing him over. They, they, they don't want him to go through the uh, for the tape. The tape. Got it. All. Okay. Yeah. So like they were pushing him out of the way. <laughs> yeah. That was that's stunning. The, the whole day's been. And look stunning. at her. She's just she walking and breathing, just normal. Yeah. Like yeah. you said, John, looks like she could just do it again. Right. Yeah. It's unbelievable. This is just a, such a stupendous run. These are like the, the, the uh, winner of the men's. Head. They want to make the Olympic team for Ethiopia, which is a hard thing to do. They're the second best. Them and us are battling for the second best kind of country in the marathon, and it's a difficult challenge. But she's got this will put her in the hunt for it. And how does that work? I mean, you said that there other countries don't do trials like we do with the marathon. They're not going to run a course all together and pick the top three finishers. So they base it on times from other marathons. Right. They'll look at just marathons around the world, try to see what 
and your other times and how fit you are going into it when they have to make the selection. So, a lot so of it's times, not a cut and dried, like, oh, you hit this time, you make the team. They select the Right. No, so, no, some people. places where they don't have a whole bunch of people under the A standard are really, really high. They'll, they'll just say you hit this time, you make it. Like uh, uh, if um, Benita Willis <laughs> runs under 232 today, she'll make her team. But Ethiopia has so many people that are in this range yeah. that it's going to be in the conversation. And where is Benita from? From from Ethiopia. From Ethiopia. Oh, okay. So she no, no, be. I'm sorry. Benita's from Australia. Australia. Okay. Australia. Got it. Yeah. So I'm thinking, wait a minute. But, yeah. I'm kidding. But Abera from Ethiopia, 223 puts you in, in, the, in the hunt to be the best. Remember, last year, Kalel ran one of the best times in the world, if not the best time, at 222 at Boston. And that's a downhill course, and it had a really freaky wind last year. They had a 14 mile an hour tailwind the entire way. So they didn't count that one. That one doesn't count things, as like right. an official record. They ran 223 today, and of course, that's, that's obviously a loop course and no wind at all. Right. So she's in the hunt to be, and this will put her in the top 10, 15 in the world. I look at the back of us because I'm looking for the other two women who she broke away from early on. I don't know if they've even finished the course yet, have they? Uh, we, no, if they run I mean, within... She's that far ahead. Right. If the second place person, and we haven't got good feedback, but finish in the next two to three minutes, they've done a great day. And I think going in, it's like the men, you look at what they've done previously, 226, 227 was a pretty good predictor for what would be a good day, and she runs 223. The men, I mean, you saw 208, 209 is their best times coming in, and you ran 206 and a 207 today. Huge chunks of time came off. Well, like you said, there's such implications here because it's not only do they win the Chevron Houston Marathon, they win a ton of cash, $35,000 for the winners, plus they're getting another 10, 10 grand. grand for these records that they're setting, yeah. but they also have the potential to represent their country in the Olympics coming up in London. Right. This, and the other bonus is, like we talked about earlier, is this opens the door to make real money at, at, the, at the major marathons, right. the ones that like to give in the, the you know, tens to hundreds of thousands. Those just appearance to, fees yeah, add up. Just to be there. Yeah, just to be there. Amazing. All right, let's Let's take you somewhere right here on Allen Parkway. Our reporter Samika Knight is out there live with more of the spectators and the racers. Good morning to you again, Sam. Good morning. Well, yeah, we're here at uh, Juan near Allen Park. Of spectators, a lot of excitement over here. I'm going to take a look here. This family here, they brought out a radio. Uh, if you can even hear it over the crowd noise, they wanted to get a little more pep in the, the runners' steps. Over here, uh, these ladies here, they're dressed in Texans colors. They, they, they congratulated me for my power red, but they're cheering on people who are wearing Texans outfits. And take a look at this here. If I can touch and okay. pluck the chicken here, T tell us about what 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 your outfit is like here. What are you doing? I am just here to spectate and enjoy and hopefully give everybody a reason to smile. And what is the purpose? I, you know, you, the smile, of course. But what is the purpose of your outfit? If we can get a full look here. Um, actually, a group of friends of mine and I always joke about showing up to races and having all of us wearing chicken suits. And they couldn't be here, but I thought, well, and, you know, we've always talked about it, so I would do it, even if they're not. Can we get a quick look at uh, what, what exactly you do when they pass by? Uh, for sure, absolutely. Can we see it? Yeah. It's nothing special. It's just cheering. <laughs> it's just cheering. This is special, I would have to this say. This is pretty much it. This is pretty much it. It's very special, if you ask me. But a lot of excitement here again. Wa, Allen Parkway, a whole lot of excitement as these runners come by. We're seeing a lot of runners still come by here. But yeah, sending it back to you, me. <laughs> yeah, you dress up in a chicken suit any day of the week. Well, on the streets of Houston, it's it's special. Well, we told people last week when we said, hey, listen, we want you to come out. We're going to be covering the marathon. Be along the route. We said, make signs. Bring your children. Bring your dogs. We did not think dress in chicken suit. That will get you on TV. That is a first here for the marathon. <laughs> we'll be back with more first, we hope, after this. Welcome back to the 40th running the Chevron Houston Marathon, and we do have a sweep. All records broken today in both the marathon and the half marathon. This has been amazing it's great. to watch. It's been exciting, yeah. too. I mean, the, the women's half, it was neck and neck between our first and second place finisher and, and records to boot. We spent the last, you know, three, four years here and, you know, get, setting marks that are good. So this wasn't like these are real weak marks that had to be broken. No. We're eventually going to go down. At some point, they can't keep breaking them. But we said that now for three years. The, the, the next year, they're not going to be faster. Next year, they're not going to be faster. And like they said, they didn't even try. Literally, they, did, they were not trying to break records in the marathon this year. No, because we had the Olympic trials right. yesterday. Right. We had some of the fastest people already running yesterday. They were out of the race today. So, Well, we do have the winner of the women's marathon with Bob Slovak. Bobby? Yeah, and you said it. A clean sweep for Ethiopia in the half marathon and the marathons today. And we have the, the women's win her with me and I'm gonna have her the translator give us her, the correct pronunciation of her name. Alamitu Abarra. 
Oh, awesome. All right, congratulations. Uh, a course record. You shattered the course record. Tell us about your race. Yeah, the record is And now, I'm going to miss so much. Joy. Short answer. Bob, I think we've lost your camera down there, but she was talking about uh, what kind of effort it took to set that new record. <laughs> it took a heck of a, le a lot of effort today. As, as John said, they weren't even trying to set new records today, and they did. Obviously, the weather has a lot to do with that. Oh, yeah. This has just been unbelievable. And it, it, I don't know if you could ask for this. Cause it didn't get, like we are talking about, it didn't yeah. get warm. The cloud cover came in no. and kept it perfect. We're now, still the cloud, in the 40s. The yeah. clouds are gone, so the, 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 the five and six hour people may not enjoy this so much. But the, No, but at least the sun is just now coming out. It didn't come out an hour ago. Right. It hasn't right. been up since sunrise at 7.15 this morning, so and that's been good. But it's helped the women too, because Benita Willis just went on to qualify for her fourth Olympic team Aww. for Australia. Made it easily, ran a 228.24. And she hasn't run a marathon since the last Olympics. So that's a pretty impressive almost opener. Wait a minute. She hasn't run a marathon since the last Olympics four years ago? Right. Yeah. She almost was, four years ago? Right. She, she was like 23rd in those Olympics in, in, in 08. How'd you like to be that person? Yeah. She, well, she just come out and run 26.2 yeah. miles. She holds qualify. every record in Australia from the 2000 to the marathon. Yeah. And was a former hockey player. Field hockey Field player. Field hockey player. So she got started. 15 years. And then she said, well, I think I'll take <laughs> let's, up. Let's try this friend. running thing. By the way, that was my neighbor, Carl Perot, who just finished the half marathon. Congratulations. Oh, uh, yay, Carl. <laughs> he said, hey, Tom. Well, and you know, there are thousands of people every year, people we know, our friends, our neighbors who are out here finishing, and there's lots of first-timers, veterans that cross this finish line behind us every year. Last year, one young lady's first attempt at the marathon nearly ended in a huge health scare, but Elena Dixon is back one year later. Despite going into cardiac arrest, she was just feet from the finish line. Last year was my first marathon. I ran a half the year before. I had been training pretty much all year long. I had been doing races prior to the start of the full marathon training, and I was excited. They said that um, probably 100 or 200 feet prior to the finish line that I dropped, had a seizure, full cardiac arrest, and that the EMTs were there immediately. 10 feet, 15 feet from that finish line. I don't remember any of that. I wish I did. Wow. It's probably better that I don't. Well, at the finish line, my coach that was filming it grabbed me and said, Elena collapsed and they had to shock her. And then they sent me away to St. Joseph's. And uh, once I got to St. Joseph's and they kept sedating me to keep me from waking up, and then they lifelighted me over to St. Luke's to begin the hypothermia treatment. Yeah, I didn't know if she was going to come out, how she was going to, you know, behave, how the mind was going to function. Um, you know, we knew she had a beating heart, but we didn't know, uh, we didn't know she had brain damage. I woke up and then they, they started running the tests and found uh, what was most likely the cause of it, which was the anomalous coronary. Get started in your groups and as soon as we get everybody done, we're going to have Elena's finish. Okay? so special because um, my running group had, they came and they saw me every time I was in the hospital, so it was just it was something really nice. You know, your first marathon you want to remember crossing the finish line. <laughs> so it was nice that they were able to do that. It makes you appreciate every minute, every time you have with your loved one. It's made me appreciate running a little bit more. Once you can't do it, you miss it. Some people would say a year later, about <laughs> to run again. This time you're only doing the half. Yeah, really it was just, I mean, something that I couldn't wait to get back to. I felt like, you know, I've been through what I've been through to fix things, to get me to where I want to be and so that we don't really have to worry about this like we did. Uh, I feel good. She's uh, She's been running, she's been training. You know, we're up to 12 and a half miles. Um, uh, no issues yet. I'm sure it'll be a little bit more emotional this time than it was the previous times. But yes, I will be excited and I'm sure I'll be happy and just glad that I was able to do it. 
Oh, no kidding. How amazing yeah. is that? I mean, and Elena, we understand, has finished the race. We're trying to track her down, see if we can chat with her. She's kind of recovering, but it sounds like she made it through just fine this year. 224, I think. 224 is what we're That's hearing. That's amazing for the half marathon. Uh, we've heard from a lot of our Facebook uh, friends and folks on Twitter. They're asking questions. Uh, one of the folks uh, was asking us, Tammy, she is diabetic, and she's older. She's in her 50s, and this brings up a great question. Can someone with some health issues, if you even know about them already, train for a marathon? Uh, uh, definitely. I think the idea of exercise always always helps ultimately. You need to see your doctor first. If, you've, if you're slightly overweight, if you haven't done exercise in a long time, that could be a big shock to the system. Your body doesn't like to take shots. If, it, if the heart rate never gets above, like, you know, 80, and all of a sudden you're cranking up to 140, that could be something that, that initial shock is dangerous. So visit your doctor, find out what, what he or she recommends as far as the starting point. Do you need to lose weight first or, uh, or, or change your diet? Um, exercise for, like, a someone who's diabetic, it, it aids in that. It, it, the idea will, it'll aid in their um, feeling better over the, the, usually there's some weight gain possibly, and you try to deal with lowering that weight gain. But you definitely have to get some sort of clearance if you haven't been exercising on a yeah. regular basis. Yeah, yeah, don't go out too fast. Just no. right, take it easy. And well, and they say you can't train for this in weeks or even months. I mean, it takes longer than that to train for something like this. Right, especially if you're starting from zero. Right. And if you're like in your mid-40s and you haven't run in ever or 20 years or something you need to start from from a walking standpoint because uh usually usually li uh, ligaments and tendons get hurt before anything inside but that everything can get hurt and like she went through her she sounds like she's in for just bad luck yeah that just sounded yeah, just, yeah. Like, she was just in good start. shape it sounds like just start yeah no matter what start you do slow. just start <laughs> Right. Elise Rivas is out at mile 18 this morning. That's where some people are still making their pace. Good morning to you, Elisa. Good morning in the Tanglewood neighborhood. Yes, between mile marker 18 and 19. And because it's so early, a lot of the runners that we're seeing right now here look pretty good. I want to give you a live look at the spot behind me where everybody is turning onto Woodway. From Woodway, they'll go up the hill to Memorial Park. And right here, we are with a couple of young ladies who are cheering on some people that they know. You're cheering on your dad, right? Yes, ma'am. And are you expecting to see him pretty soon? Yes, ma'am. All right, you got water with you, and we are getting close to mile marker 20, which a lot of people refer to as the wall, that time when they just run out of energy. You have a candy bar with you. He wanted a candy bar. <laughs> Preferably, Preferably dark. dark with no peanuts or, or caramel. caramel. Hey, every runner has their rituals, right? And I guess eating candy bars happens to be his. Do you think you could ever do something like this? No. It would take me three days. I would die. Yeah. Three days to finish. I think they'd have to close down the streets by then. Everybody has until, I think, about 1 o'clock to finish up here. But these runners look good, excuse me, provided that they can go ahead and finish up at the pace they are. They're going to go ahead and make it to the finish line just fine. But we're out here. We're watching. As the day goes on, the runners start to look a little bit more worn. But the runners out here making this pace right now, this early in the morning, are looking pretty good. Back to you. They really are. And the longer they go, the more worn they look because as one elite marathon runner once told us, I couldn't run a race in that many hours. I couldn't run for three hours. That's the thing. You know, you picture these elites that are out there for two, two and a half, three hours and, and everybody else, five, six hours. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's a long time. That's the famous Bill Rogers quote when he met a five hour marathon. He, marathoner, he asked, how can you run for so long? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the course is open for six hours, closes approximately one o'clock this afternoon. Of course, one of the incentives to running this quicker is to get home and watch the Texans you game. You got which it. Starts at noon. Yay. Go Texans. Back well, with more. Welcome back, everyone. Tom Cook, Casey Curry, and Rice University track coach John Warren with you for our continuing live coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon and the Aramco Half Marathon. Behind us, the finish line. Many people making their way right it's across exciting. it now. It's exciting. It's been really fast. We just noticed on the on the results coming in that we're talking about the Olympics. Ava Hutchinson from Ireland needed to run a 237, which is the general A standard, and she, she crushed it. She ran a 235-33, so she'll be going to the Olympics for Ireland. Very exciting. This is super cool. Just think, folks, the people you're watching today at the Chevron Houston Marathon, you're going to watch them in London months yeah. from now. Yeah, it's great. It's very exciting. All right, Bob Slovak is down at the finish line with some Come people here. crossing it. Bobby? Yeah, I'm, I'm here with uh, Cindy. What's your last name, Cindy? I'm Anderson. And your name? Laura Wilson. They're still breathing hard. They just crossed the finish line of the half marathon. How was it? It was good. It was fun, even though we're tired. <laughs> I'm so happy we're finished.
finished. Yeah, you made it. Yeah. I've never run that far before. Really? Yeah, the farthest I've ever run is eight miles. And you, and you, you made it 13. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> that face says it all right. Now, will you do it again? Yeah, it's, it's fine. We'll do it again. Definitely. Not tomorrow. No. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Go get some rest. Tom, Bob, will you do it? Uh, maybe one day. I'll maybe. put it on. It's on the bucket list. Okay. It's All on right. the bucket list. All right. Well, I saw John Warren cringe when that cute young lady said, I, the furthest I've ever run is eight miles, and she just turned out a half marathon. <laughs> yeah, you don't really need to run more than, like, you know, what is that? Through three fifths of the distance, yeah, yeah. barely half. That it's luckily she had a great day for it. If it was a bad day, it would be. And she looks a little young different. too. I mean, she's relatively young. That's, that can't hurt. No, no. I mean, the worst thing normally what happens is you just cramp or yeah. something. Yeah. It's not like it's anything yeah. devastating. And if she's a right. regular runner, she can press the distance a little bit. That was You've hilarious. That, I have done that a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is very cool. Well, speaking of the ladies, uh, 40 years ago there was just one woman that finished the Houston Marathon, and now there are more women than ever taking part in all three races. Yeah. the 5K, the half, and the full marathon. And the competition, of course, is fierce. And our own Adela Uchida, she found out that many runners are turning to science to take their running to the next level. And you get to wear a fabulous nose clip. Yay. I hear that's really in this season. From odd-looking breathing machines to underwater weighing. You gained a pound. I gained a pound? Yep. The folks over at Memorial Hermann Ironman Institute are helping athletes take their game to the next level. Kim, what was that last pace at? Eight minute pace. For the past three years, I have been running the Houston Marathon in hopes of qualifying for the Boston Marathon. I broke four hours for the first time last year with a time of three hours, 56 minutes and 47 seconds. <laughs> But it was 11 minutes shy of my ultimate goal. And like so many runners, I'm beginning to wonder if I can hit 345. You've got to train hard and that's the hardest part. That's why I decided to find out what my body can really do. First up, they're going to measure my resting metabolic rate. What it does is it measures the oxygen that you breathe in and the carbon dioxide that you breathe out. and takes that ratio and feeds it into some formulas. Those formulas will determine how many calories I will burn both at rest and combined with other testing when I'm running. We'll talk about the results later. Next up, most women's nightmare, the scale and body fat percentage. But this scale, you actually want to weigh more. Take a big breath, curl up in a ball, go under and blow it out. This is the most accurate way of taking these measurements. The more body density you have, the more muscle you have. The more muscle, bone, fat-free mass, the more, the, the, the more good parts. Up next, the treadmill. What we're going to do is every three and a half minutes, we're going to make you go a little faster. Before we do that, I'm going to do a finger stick and get a blood sample. Okay. And then we'll go on to the next workload. Here they are going to get an accurate measurement of my lactate threshold and how many calories I will burn per hour. This okay. turns out to be a pretty good workout. They're also going to take a 3D look at my gait or running motion to make sure there are no flaws in the way I run. This is your gait analysis. So what I did is I took video of you from the front and back and both sides. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to look at it in slow motion and just see what's going on. After 40 minutes on the treadmill, my results are in. I would like to see your baseline lactate a little lower. In other words, I'd like to see it down in the three range, mm -hmm. two and a half range. And that's really a function of your aerobic energy system. To do this, I will have to start running a few days a week at a slower pace, but I have at least two days a week I have to hit the track for speed workouts. Now that we know exactly where your lactate threshold is on, on a pace basis, we know, we know which pace causes a rise in your lactate, we can better plan that training. As for my running motion, everything looks good. The only concern is that I run way up on my toes. I'd like to see that a little bit off the toe, a little bit more midfoot and or just be really, really consistent with foam rolling, uh, stretching those calves. The main concern came from dietitian Penny Wilson. She's a little concerned with my weight and body fat percentage, which is a little low, something actually not unusual in female endurance athletes. Gaining a little bit of weight wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for you. It would probably be a good thing. Her suggestion, shorter workout days, I should be taking in around 2,400 calories. Your longer run day, you'd need about 3,400, 3,500 calories a day. It's a lot of food. 
That's a lot of food. Bottom line, I need to put on a few pounds, get in some speed workouts, and really work on stretching and the dreaded foam roller if I want to hit my goal and head to Boston. All right, Adela, you go. We checked. She's pretty much on pace to do right. it, so we hope she does. I know. We, we don't want to jinx her, but gosh, we sure are hoping she uh, she hits it today. Sounds yep. like she's putting everything together to try to make it. It's very complicated. It's not as simple as just throwing on exactly. your shoes and running, is it? Have you had your lactate levels checked lately, John? <laughs> not, not lately, okay. no. <laughs> no they, they, you know, they, did you see how they do it? They actually take blood. They keep doing it continuously. They, 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 they just take a prick and keep taking blood out of your over and over and over. Every it's just two got more minutes. and more painful. Oh, okay. If she's on there 40 minutes, it probably took blood like 15, 20 and times. And keeps testing it. Yeah, and, it's, and it hurts. Okay. So well, we'll somebody put a needle in your We'll test John's body. lactate levels and other things <laughs> and then come back with more of the marathon right after this. Come in. Welcome back, everybody, to ABC 13's live coverage of the Chevron Houston Marathon, the Aramco Half Marathon, and the EP5K. What a day we have had. I am Casey Curry, joined by Tom Cook, our running expert, John Warren from Rice University, and the race director for the Houston Marathon, Brant Koch. You've got to be just super excited. I don't even know how we're keeping you in the seat right now. I, it's hard. It's hard. I, I'm just stunned. I mean, we had a marvelous day yesterday, and we've had an... I, I didn't think it was possible to Neither did we. improve on yesterday. Yesterday, and we've had four races and four records today, men, men and women in both the half and the full marathons. Well, every so year we keep saying, race records. can we do any better than we did last year? You know, you get these PRs, and then you go, uh-oh, here we go. We're going to break them all this year. You know, that, that actually, I mean, that is happening. 2011 was a tremendous year for distance running. I mean, we had, we had world records in the marathon and uh, we had we had a world record in the marathon then at the very end of the season we had another guy who was within four seconds of that the Kenyans were just dominant uh, but interestingly we seem to do best with Ethiopians and uh, I think all, I, I'm don't quote me on this I think all of our were all of our winners this morning Ethiopian yes yes they were I think so yeah they were um, and, and we've had a lot of luck with them in the past. It, it was just, boy, some marvelous performances. So are you breathing a sigh of relief yet? I mean, I feel like all eyes on Houston, not only around the country, but around the world, because there's so much uh, world impact, especially with the Olympic trials for us yesterday. So many runners today making their own Olympic teams with their showing. Yes, yes. Benita, uh, Benita Willis, uh, easily. All she had to do was run. Under, I just talked to her. She oh. said all I had to do was run under 332. Oh. Because she was walking. To, I know. Two, excuse me, wow. 232. And um, she was walking around like she had just had a stroll in the park. And Amazing. I and I commented. She ran 228 right. and change. And Ava Hutchinson made it for the uh, Irish team. She ran 235. Okay. She had to run 237. She made it pretty easily, too. Great. Alamito Abera looked pretty good after I, running the marathon in record time here. Today was just another idea. I, the weather gods have really, yeah. really cut us cut us a good yeah. one this so, year. It, it was so something. talk about the overall event today. Everything went great. I mean, we had all of our elite runners that did so well, which is a nice surprise. But everything else has, has been really well. All the volunteers, uh, so many spectators out here. It's it's all good. Uh, the, just uh, this uh, Houston is really establishing itself as a premier city for running. Uh, with the trials yesterday, with all of the events today, with the tremendous crowd support I've been getting reports of all morning. Our volunteer crew, uh, 7,500 volunteers yeah. on race weekend. I, I, boy, I can't say enough about them. I, I, particularly our, our organizing committee, uh, we, we've been just working our hearts out, off, working, <laughs> working the, our skin to the bones. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, and I'm now really, it's almost I'm, time to get to look ahead to next year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I, I think we may take a few weeks take a off. What? No, a few no weeks rest off. for the weary, well, Brent. Next year we know you can't top this year. You can only match it now. You set a bar that you That's can't. That's true. You cannot we can break really more set records. records. You can't. You can't do more than four. I mean, right. that's it. <laughs> that is it. Four. That's all there are. Um, and yeah, the, and then yeah. I don't know what else to say. I, I really am. I'm almost speechless. I mean, I'm also just 
barely hanging oh, on. You see everybody crossing the finish line in their respective races, whatever it is, and it just the joy on it on a lot. Of, I know a lot of people are struggling, but there's a lot of people very happy right now. And these records that were set today, they're records that when when the year's over, they're going to be. I, I wouldn't surprise if all of them are top 10 in the world, definitely top 20. Yeah. And some are going to be, like the half men's might be number two, three, four in the world, maybe number one. Right. They, they're that good of records. They're not just records that were good for this course. They're going to a level, uh, a higher level that's, we, that's well, let's go for it probably next you've year. never achieved. It. Well, I, I have to, I, I'm going to plug myself here. I did predict three records today. I, I thought we'd get, I, I definitely thought the half records would fall. Right. Because w this is the first time we've had an international field in seven years for the men and yeah. five years for the women. Well, we're looking at the finish line behind us tonight, 10.35, the other finish line, our half-hour special on today's marathon coverage. The race recap, check it out. You'll see friends, family members, and neighbors, and you'll see some great finishes in the 2012 Chevron Houston Marathon and the Aramco Half Marathon. What a day it has been. So amazing. And as we say goodbye, thanks so much to our running expert, uh, John Warren, for spending always, the time with us as well. Brant, congratulations. And <laughs> As we uh, say goodbye to you folks, as you're all getting ready for the Texans game oh, coming man. up in just a little bit, uh, we want to leave you with a look at the winners today. Have a great day, everybody.